The CBS Friday Night Movies will not be presented tonight in order that we may bring you the NBA championship game between the Boston Celtics and the Phoenix Suns. The NBA championship began with two games in the Boston Garden. The Celtics and Dave Collins handled the Phoenix Suns with such ease that many experts thought the series would end in four games. The scene then shifted down to Phoenix, and in game three, it got extremely rough in the second quarter. Ricky Sobers, number 40 of the Phoenix Suns, and Kevin Stakem, number 27 of the Boston Celtics, got into a vicious fist fight. Both players were ejected from the contest. After that, it was the Rookie of the Year, Alvin Adams, who took complete command as the amazing Suns scratched and clawed their way back into the playoff. Then it was game four on Wednesday night. Garfield Hurd, with an amazing second effort, put the Suns up by two. He missed, went back up for the tap, and got it in. Then the Suns had an opportunity to salt it away. Keith Erickson with a miss. Celtics pull it down with 12 seconds to play. They don't want the timeout. They want to set up as quickly as possible. The play is already called. But the Suns have taken away the pass to Dave Collins. The secondary man is JoJo White. Sobers with a good defensive play. And suddenly, the series is tied. And I think you can hear in the background the noise emanating from the Boston Garden where the scene has shifted for game five of this NBA championship. Hondo John Havlicek has just been introduced. He will start for the first time in the championship series. He will be at one forward along with Silas, Collins, and of course the two guards. And good evening, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger along with Rick Berry. So nice that you can come along and watch this game. And judging from the ratings, an awful lot of you are starting to enjoy this championship series, and we couldn't be happier here at CBS. Rick, what do we expect tonight? Well, I think tonight you're going to probably see the Phoenix sticking with what they did so well down in Phoenix, winning those two ball games. And you saw John Havlicek come out for the Boston Celtics, which shows that Tom Heinsohn is prepared to make some changes. He wants to try to get the ball down deep inside of Dave Cowens and generate more offense for the Boston Celtic big man. All right, Rick, I'm sure our audience can hear booze in the background. The officials have been very controversial in this series. For more on that, let's go to our colleague, Mindy Rudolph. After suffering losses on each other's courts, both teams complained bitterly about the officials. In fact, they suggested perhaps that they receive special instructions on how to call the game. Such is not the case, we've been assured by John Nucatola. In fact, I think they've done a heck of a job and will continue to do so. Now, probably Dave Collins said it better than anybody, and I quote, he said, never before in a series has officiating be so emphasized. In fact, they are not the ones who put the ball in the basket, nor are they the ones who commit the turnovers, nor are they the ones who miss last second shots. The best way, he says, to win a ball game is to adjust according to the game and to score more points than the opponents. Now let's go to Sunny Hill for more on tonight's ball game. What is the mood of the ball players? If you're with the Boston Celtics, JoJo White, I'm concerned we have to win the ball games at home. Paul Silas, I have respect for this ball club. Maybe starting out, I didn't think that way, but I think that way now. Phoenix Suns, I'm ready. That's what Curtis Perry says, and I believe my team is ready. Confidence, Paul Westfall saying, I'm not overconfident, but I'm confident. But maybe Gar Hurd says it's best. When he told me, he said, Sonny, I told you early in the series that we could do it, and I still feel we can do it. Let's go to Brent Musburger and Rick Barry. We are ready for the start of game five from the Boston Garden on this Friday night. The referees, number 26 is Richie Powers, and working with him will be Don Murphy. Both of these two officials have worked one game each in the championship series. Murphy was one of the officials Wednesday night. As for Richie, he worked earlier game two. Alvin Adams, who has played spectacularly well so far against Dave Collins, they will go to tip it off. If you're looking for something early, watch the Celtics try to feed Dave Collins. JoJo White misses, and Dave Collins, with great effort, hustling there from the center jump, put it down on the second chance, and here come the Phoenix Suns. Scott against Sober. Scott trying hard not to foul out for the first time in this series. He has fouled out of all four games, and he has just picked up number one in game five. Charlie Scott this time did not get as upset on some of the previous calls that he had. He picked up the foul as with a double team by Cowens and Scott on the jump shot by Sobers. The rookie 
Las Vegas, Nevada, at the free throw line. Grew up in New York, attended DeWitt Clinton High School, but did not play any basketball there. Two to one, just underway. Sobers awaits JoJo White. Now Dave Cowens plans to come out much higher and keep Paul Silas at the point. They've been double teaming Cowens. Garfield Hurd has been blocking up that area. There's Silas out away from the basket. They're giving him that shot. And if he continues to hit it, there will have to be a defensive change on the part of the Suns. They have been begging Paul Silas to put it up in this series. Curtis Perry handling the ball back to Ricky Sobers. Havlicek starting for the first game. Curtis Perry on the turnaround right baseline. It is 4-3. You can tell that the Suns' confidence has been growing with each game. Their shooting percentage from 38 to 39 to 44 to 47 over the four-game span. Silas with his second option when Garfield Hurt backs off. He can drive to the hoop, as he did right there. That's it's 6-3 Celtics. That'll cause a lot of problems for the Phoenix Sun defense if Paul Silas becomes more offensive-minded. Cowan's got a hand on the ball, and here come the Celtics. White in control. Celtics running more with Havlicek on the floor. JoJo White threw the first foul from the Phoenix Sun. JoJo White makes a good move here to get inside. You'll see the play back here coming now on defense. Cowan's good defense comes over, knocks the ball loose. JoJo picking up the ball, takes it down the floor, and makes a good penetration move. Normally, JoJo likes to pull up and take that 15-foot opportunity jump shot, but it looks as though the Celtics are going to try to get inside the Phoenix Sun defensive early in this ballgame. Perhaps the most consistent shooting guard in the series has been JoJo White. Paul Westfall came on, played spectacularly in game four in Phoenix. It's seven to three, Celtics lead. One team foul apiece against Phoenix and Boston. The NBA championship tied two games apiece. Curtis Perry turns around on Silas. Shot was high. Garfield Hurd could not save it. Out of bounds, and here come the Celtics. And Rick Barry, you can tell right away that the Celtics are moving much quicker with number 17, John Havlicek, in their starting lineup. No question about it, Frank. John Havlicek gives them added movement out on the floor. He's a good, smart ball player who knows what to do in the right situation. And there's Hondo shooting. He had a poor shooting two games down in Phoenix. And after that shot, John McLeod has gone to a timeout. And listen to the crowd in the Boston Garden. They watched that crowd from Phoenix on back-to-back -back games. For the first time that I've been in the Garden this year, the fans are alive. There's passion in the air. We're in for an evening. Back in the Boston Garden. Just underway. Game five of the NBA championship. Ten minutes and three seconds to go in the first quarter. Nine to three. Boston leads Phoenix. John Havlicek starting for the first time. And pressure. Curtis Perry helps out. Havlicek will take him. Here's the rookie. Sobers against the former son, Charlie Scott. JoJo White out of Kansas up against Paul Westfall, ex-Celtic. Perry gives it back. And here's Westfall. Good defense. Shot clock down. They're going to have to hurry. Inside of five. Great defense by the Celtics. Scott comes out on the move ahead of Garfield. Gives it to Dave Collins. He should have shot it himself that time. He was so intent on team basketball that he gave it up when he should have taken it to the hoop. Curtis Perry now puts it down on the floor, and we've got a travel call. They have turned it over. The defense by the Celtics, extremely intense. They're working very hard. They forced the Suns out of their offense. They started about 25 feet from the basket, much too far for the Suns to be effective with that pattern offense. The Suns have turned it over four early times. Wait, what a beautiful play. Took it from Scott. It has been a different Boston Celtic team here early in game five. They have strapped on those shoes real tight. West ball with a miss. Collins out. Over JoJo's head. He got it. Brings it down on top of Sobers. Bounce pass to Hondo. This is Boston Celtic basketball at its best. Forcing turnovers, putting the pressure on defensively, doing what they did so well in the third quarter in the two games played in Boston to start the series off. And John McLeod right away calling a timeout, trying to get his troops back together. Watch the play here in the back door. The back door from 25 feet out, JoJo with the layup. 
The Datsun's always been dependable. You know, after 95,000 miles, I, you know, I think we both felt our Datsun still looked good. We were rough on the car, too. We had to go through some gravel roads, some rough fields, and we took it all over the place. And we can get our, a good, full life out of a Datsun. You betcha, yeah. It's always been dependable. Datsun dependability comes 14 ways. Sedans, wagons, hatchbacks, trucks, and sports cars. Datsun Sage. This is an amazing new chemical fiber called Aramid Plus. Pound for pound, it is five times stronger than steel. Put this fiber in a radial tire and it'll ride smoother than a steel belted radial. It absorbs vibrations like an extra shock absorber. Kelly Springfield designed its newest radial tire with Aramid Plus. Strong, smooth riding, the finest Kelly Springfield radial tire ever made. Aramid Plus, it's a step ahead of steel. Kelly Springfield. Tires that make a world of difference. When Roger Green was a little boy, he wanted to be a policeman. Last week it happened. Car 34, when Roger brought Green home his new Bearcat police scanner. Car 34, 10 4. Bearcats automatically track down the action around town and make you a part of it. Police calls, fire calls, emergency calls. Car 34 has suspect in custody. Well done. Bearcat well done. scanners. Well done. Well done. The most exciting thing that's happened to home entertainment since television. Bearcat, the largest selling police scanner in America. Tomorrow afternoon on CBS, the Belmont Stakes. Can Bull Forbes win two legs of the Triple Crown? Don't forget Jimmy the Greek's tip. Mackenzie Bridge, Mindy Rudolph, get I've, all over that horse. I've got it. It's not Majestic <laughs> Tunnel, right? Oh, Mackenzie Bridge. Ten to one, I saw. Sobers brings it up on Scott. 13-3. Celtics on an early tear. Garfield Hurd stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Don Murphy with a lot of help from the crowd here in the Boston Garden. Once again, a great pressure by the Celtic defense, something that has not been present in the last two basketball games. And watch Silas staying out of the way, trying to position Collins, who was open momentarily. Silas again, two for two outside. That will drastically alter John McLeod's thinking. 15 to three. for the first time. Gar Hurd and Charlie Scott came out and Hurd was fouled as he came across and Hurd is saying, well, I get to shoot two that time. We've got a couple of fouls on Charlie Scott early in this game. But he was not in the act of shooting. They will take it out on the side, not yet in the penalty. Richard Powers' opinion granted was a pass off. Therefore, it's a, uh, you know, out of bounds play, Phoenix inbound. Perry with a miss and here come the Celtics again. Reminiscent of the third quarter in game two. Hondo gives it up and finally it wheels back to Scott. Outside Charlie Scott with a miss. He was eight of 30 in the two games down in Phoenix. That is not a good shot to take. The Boston Celtics don't like that type of shot. You can get that shot anytime. Adams outside. Good touch out there. Nice to see Alvin Adams and Dave Collins on the cover of Sports Illustrated this morning. Hondo puts it down. Make it 17 to 5. 7.35 to go in the first quarter. Game 5, Boston Garden. Celtics are shooting 8 for 11, a fantastic percentage. Sobers gives it up on the turnover. Silas has got you-know-who, Hondo. That was a super play by John Havlicek right that time. He had a defensive man coming down. Now let's just watch how John draws him into this foul. There's the steal coming up. Silas with good anticipation on the pass. Long pass to Havlicek. Now watch him cut off the angle on Alvin Adams and force Alvin Adams to run into him and pick him up to get the foul. Eight points for John Havlicek and a chance to boost the total with the three-point play. 36-year-old veteran has lit up the Celtics in the Boston Garden and Curtis Perry and Dave Collins are out. Richie Powers, now hold on, Richie's got a quick trigger. Collins and Perry are at it. Collins and Garfield heard earlier. Now John McLeod comes out, wants to check and see. Tommy Heinsohn also off the Celtic bench. Both players are gonna stay in a game. A lot of shoving, no punches were thrown. 7.15 to go, first quarter. Sobers inside to Gar Hurd, and look at Cowan's hustle on the D. 
He is like a man possessed out there, Brent. Wow, intercepted by Hurd. Great defensive play by Garfield Hurd, who I think was the player of the game in the fourth outing. Here he comes. He's got it. Waits for Silas. Comes up. High arch and puts it down. He has become some forward in the NBA. From Seattle to Chicago to Buffalo to Phoenix to the NBA championship. Havlicek rolling, and it was Garfield Hurd who blocked it. Out the other side, Hondo, and Curtis Perry yanks it down. With so much noise, we did not hear the whistle, which was blown. Foul is going to be on Garfield Hurd on the rebound, and you see Keith Erickson coming into the ball game now. John McLeod trying to generate some offense. Keith Erickson has not been able to do that in the first four ball games. Tommy Heinsohn whispering instructions into Charlie Scott's ears. He stood there to throw it in bounds. That Arsdale down. Power. 22 to 7. The Suns still can't climb back into it. 6-23. Now the Suns have to rely on patience. Dig back in. Bring it back slowly. Adams. 22 to 9 is the rookie of the year with his second basket from outside, using the glass this time. Scott with the penetrating move. Those are the type of plays that certainly can break down a defense. The Celtics have been able to get inside. The Suns have not been able to. Again, it is the rookie off the iron. Silas. Scott. Silas. Heard. What a display of fast break basketball now going on in the Boston Garden. Magnificent performance. And Arsdale and Scott collided. Number three on Charlie Scott, who went down and slammed into that basket support. And let me tell you, again, Charlie Scott is not complaining. He so badly wanted to stay in this fifth game of the series. I think two of the fouls have been good ones, particularly this one. How could he avoid it, Rick? Well, he's coming down. Dick Van Arsdale sees he's got a little lane. He tries to go. He runs the cut off. He makes the mistake there you saw with his left hand trying to block the shot. If he had not blocked the shot, I think he would have caused a great deal of problems for Dick Van Arsdale trying to make that shot. The reach in cost him. Van Arsdale, who broke that left wrist earlier in the year, still wearing the tape as Glenn McDonald, the second year pro, checks in and Charlie Scott goes out. That means Havlicek comes to guard. I think the best thing would have happened on that play, Brent, is let Van Arsdale go for the field goal and give it to him to get about possible third foul. Touching the ball for the first time, McDonald gave it up and got it back from White. Garfield Hurd obviously not losing his cool, working hard on both boards. Erickson outside over Cowens just kind of threw one up. Would have been better served to try and work it in. Here comes JoJo White. Silas goes for three and three outside. And Cowens came up against Alvin Adams, and the loose ball foul is called. Number one against Cowens. Dave, that time getting called for his over-aggressiveness on the offensive board. Defensive man had good position inside, and Dave just tried to take it away from him over the back. What a different feeling in the Boston Garden. In the first two games, the fans here thought it was going to be a rut. They expected it to go 4-0. The Suns gave them a rude awakening down in Phoenix. Silvers inside. And Alvin Adams tapped it back to Gar Hurd. Ball would not go, but another spectacular effort from the rookie by out of Oklahoma. Hondo, magnificent first quarter for John Havlicek. And John Havlicek was out practicing today for the first time since he hurt his foot. And he said he wanted to get his touch back. He felt that he didn't have the touch shooting. And he's got it this evening. To follow up on that, John Havlicek was out practicing all alone. No one else from the South, just Hondo. And Arsdale misses, and Cowan, who has been a reign of terror here so far, again has got the rebound. Here's the youngster, McDonald, giving it back to Cowan. John McLeod is going to call another timeout, but I honestly don't know of a thing he can do right now. It has been an unbelievable effort on the part of the Boston Celtics. Brent, that's something very unusual. You'll see a team call three timeouts in the first quarter. I don't think you'll see that maybe 10% of the time during league play. Well, Mindy, I think that of all the coaches that I've seen, John McLeod 
is second to none as far as knowing when to use his timeouts properly. He just feels that the Celtics have so much momentum going, he's trying everything within his power to try to stop that momentum. And he feels the only way to do that right now is to call a timeout, try to get themselves together, keep their composure. There is the commissioner, Larry O'Brien, talking to the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Nick Maletti. Now, I spoke to Larry before the game, and he said so far he had not been brought into the controversy over Bill Fitch, who is the coach of Cleveland, but who has retained an attorney to get out of the final two years of his contract. There is also talk of a merger in the air. And Larry said that the ABA probably will be getting back to him sometime within the next 10 days. He was neither optimistic nor pessimistic about what might happen. There is speculation that the ABA owners will be meeting in Chicago to get together a proposal for Larry and the NBA owners like Maletti. And don't forget a spectacular day tomorrow. Super Joe Einhorn. And what's this? Muhammad Ali versus Gorilla Monsoon. Who is Gorilla Monsoon? Gorilla Monsoon is a professional wrestler, Brent, and he was uh, in a little bout one time, and Muhammad Ali crawled in the ring, and some very interesting things happened in that ring. I thought it might be Howard Cosell and Drag. <laughs> <laughs> and there is Irv Levin, the chairman of the Celtics board, along with Fred Arbach. And what a scene it was in the Boston Garden today. Arbach closing the door of his office, breaking out the movie projector, private talks with Tommy Heinsohn, private talks with Paul Silas and Jojo White. They are up for this one. There's no question about that. And you notice that they have not done it with over-aggressiveness from the defensive standpoint as far as holding and bumping and shoving. They have put good pressure on. they played good position. And they've gotten their game established without the overuse of aggressiveness that was prevalent in the last two games down in Phoenix. So they can't get their game going without being that rough. Dave Cowens with a much deserved rest out of the game and Jimmy Yard will chase Alvin Adams. Perry inside. We've seen that play. It has worked a couple of times. Yes, it Lop is a pass. breakdown on the Celtics weak side help. The man on the weak side should be dropping in to help that man who was running on the ball side. 28 to 12 and 3.30 to go in the first quarter. Adams may be a little too quick for Ard. We'll watch that. Jimmy rolling the left-handed shot. Pretty offensive play by Jimmy Yard. Those are the type of plays where Jimmy Yard is tough, down in close to the basket. He should not be outside shooting jumpers. He took a bad shot in the last game that hurt him. Great pass by Adams inside. Erickson could not put it down. And again in the garden, the lid is on, and Erickson's down. He is hurt. Keith is hurt. Jojo White in and out. Havlicek, second chance down. Now Keith Erickson can get the injury time out over here. He is limping back over toward the Suns bench. He injured a leg after coming through, attempting a layup. John McLeod furious. Looks like his right ankle, Brandy, seemed to twist his right ankle after the play, trying to hustle back to get the ball. Brent, they've called an injury timeout, which will not affect the overall timeout. They still have four timeouts remaining in the ballgame. It's a 20-point Boston Celtic lead, and let's take a look at that, Rick. Watch the play. Now, look at his right ankle right there. John Havlicek comes down and steps on it, and as he goes to move, his ankle turns in because of John stepping on it. It was just a freak play. Westfall tried to penetrate and give it up, and there was pushing as Paul tried to swim down that left baseline and get to the basket. We had a lot of pretty girls down in Phoenix, and I see we've got quite a few on hand here in Boston. 2.44 to go in the first quarter. The ex-Celtic Paul Westfall at that line. Paul and Charlie Scott have been alternating games as far as playing good games and then poor games. It seems that they're trying a little bit too hard when they're playing at the team at the city where they came from. Paul played poorly in the first two games, played well in Phoenix, and Charlie played well up here and poorly down in Phoenix. Let me set the Celtics lineup. Havlicek, Silas, McDonald, Ard, and White about to be altered. Dave Collins will check back in. Westfall almost had a steal and an easy basket. White is open all alone. For Phoenix on the attack, Van Arsdale, Westfall, Dennis Autry, Alvin Adams, and Curtis Perry. So the two centers are operating against Ard, and Cowens will come back. And it was Paul Sadas who screened Autry out and yanked down the board, and Glenn McDonald gave it up. Ard didn't expect the pass. There was contact. Curtis Perry slammed into him underneath. A much more relaxed Tommy Heinsohn than we witnessed down in Phoenix. Still got his tie tight. 
Let's watch this play coming down the floor. The long pass by JoJo White. Gets it down to Glenn McDonald, who can shoot the ball. Sees Jimmy Art, passes to him. Curtis Perry cannot stop himself and runs into him, picking up the foul. Allen's. Outlet from West Falls. Too far away from Alvin Adams. He overlet him. And on the turnover, the Celtics will bring it back. That's seven turnovers now for the Phoenix Suns, Brent. Pressure defense in the garden. With a minute 50 to go in the first quarter, Charlie Scott, again on the penetration, should have just gone right up for the basket that time. And here are the Suns. McDonald knocked it away and out of bounds. And then an interesting substitution, bringing Charlie Scott back into the ball game with three personal fouls, with JoJo White going to the bench. I'd have expected to see Kevin Stakem in this situation, but instead Charlie is back out there with a the score 34 14 and 133 in the first. Dick Van Arsdale. Here come the Celtics from behind the back. It's Scott. It's three on two. Hondo on the left wing, breaking all alone, has position, battling for the ball. Curtis Perry takes it away, and here come the Suns. Havlicek running better than I've seen him at any time, and Jimmy Yard came right down on top of Van Arsdale. We had five team fouls against the Celtics, four against Phoenix. So penalty coming up for Van Arsdale. Well, here's the penetration we talked so much about. Dick Van Arsdale gets McDonald turned sideways, goes inside, pulls the ball away from Jim Ard, who hacks him across the arm as he goes to the basket. Keith Erickson is walking away with the Phoenix team position towards the locker room. He is now out of the oh, arena. There is the back of one of the doctors as they go through. So Keith suffered an injured ankle. Goes back here early in the first quarter. It's been a frustrating final series. I was just going to say that. He's had difficulty putting the ball in the basket, plus getting into foul trouble in several of the games. What a series he had against the Golden State Warriors. He's one of the reasons why Rick Barry is sitting next to me and not playing against the Boston Celtics. Glenn McDonald gives it up. 34 16, 50 seconds. If you're wondering about game six, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS right after the soccer showdown between the Cosmos and the Rowdies and Westfall, no, offense. Great defensive position that time. Picking up the charge on Paul Westfall. And Arsdale out. Sobers and Westfall at guard for Phoenix. Autry and Adams, both centers on the floor for Phoenix and both centers for Boston. Ard and Collins. Steve Kaberski, 33 on the floor. Curtis Perry, who has come back after a short rest and has shown some aggression on that defensive board. Sobers directs the play verbally. Sobers wants it. They're trying to take advantage of Charlie Scott, who has the three fouls, and Charlie backed off, and he had the shot to the basket. Ard is open. At the buzzer. Jimmy Ard climaxes the highest scoring quarter of this series. In the third quarter of game two, the Boston Celtics exploded for 34 points. But here in the first quarter, with something to prove in game five, they get 36 and lead it. The NBA championship on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. See the premiere of. To recap that first quarter briefly, Brent and Rick, of course, Boston established their running game, controlled both boards, shut off the driving lanes of Phoenix, and were able to penetrate to the basket. Therefore, the score, 36-18. And right away, Collins is hustling in the backcourt as we start the second quarter. Pressure from the Celtics, who lead it 36-18. Phoenix on the attack. Gar Heard, Perry, Autry, Sobers, and Westfall. Adams on the bench. Sobers left alone. I'll show you just how effective the Boston Celtics defense was in that first quarter. Phoenix Suns never scored back to back field goals. White. That's two times Ricky Sobers has turned his head to the basketball and been backdoored by JoJo White. All alone, Westfall with a miss. And the Celtics bring it back quickly. And the Suns are there just as quickly, even though Autry fell down. Jimmy Yard. And Steve Cabrera.
Kaberski left alone. They did not seal off the left side of the glass. Kaberski came flying across for an easy second chance hoop. Scott does not want the fourth foul. He lets Silvers go. Phoenix turned it over anyway. Let's watch Steve Kaberski come in. Here's the jump shot. Watch Kaberski come down the middle. Nobody's screening him off. Here he comes. Wide open lane. Ball bounces right to him. Easy layup. Phil Lumpkin will check in for John McLeod's Phoenix Sun. <laughs> Offensive foul on Dave Collins. Collins protesting. Foul number two on the redhead. And Lumpkin and Mindy, I couldn't be pulling more for someone to come in this game and play well. He had an awfully tough game. There's the play right now. We're going to try and get in to watch Dave start the back in. Backs in a little bit. A little bit of an acting job. I don't know whether Murphy wanted to call a foul or a traffic critic on that play. 10-28. Andre came through, and it was a three-second violation, so it won't count. Curtis Perry was not able to get out of that lane quick enough. And so, Rick, it stays at 40-20. This field goal percentage is 31% for Phoenix, Grant, and 61% for the Boston Celtics. A devastating first quarter. Dave Collins is continuing his reign of terror as we begin the second quarter. Phoenix Suns have not been able to shut down the inside game of the Boston Celtics, and it's hurting them very badly in this ball game. In Phoenix, Collins had only 19 shots. Lumpkin misses. Autry is there. Won't fall. Phil retrieves it and gives it back to Dennis, who's all alone. Collins may have 19 shots in the first half of this game. All right. White. Silas ready to check back in for Tommy Heitzel. West ball cut off by Ard. It's offense, no doubt about it. Jimmy Ard with great position. Two fouls against West ball. Watch the play coming up here. Here's a Jim Ard move over, establishes position. Paul Westfall making the contact as Jimmy Ard establishes excellent position. Another fine defensive play by the Boston Celtics here in the first half. Milwaukee was the victim in 1974. All told, there are 12 of those championship banners up there. And before the game, Al Bianchi, the assistant coach at Phoenix, walked in, looked around, and pointed and said, boys, you see those flags? I helped put some of them there. Al Bianchi was a losing guard several times to Boston as JoJo White with a miss, and Curtis Perry yanks it down. Now, Rick, tell me what Phoenix must do to get back in this basketball game. They're down by 10 hoops. They've got to shut off the middle, make it a little more difficult for the Boston Celtics to score easy baskets and try to execute their offense and get inside just like that. Just like you told them, Rick Barry, with 8.55 to go, it's 42-24. And that is the first back-to-back -back hoop for Phoenix so far in this game. Kaberski and Perry collided, and we've got an offensive foul against Steve Kaberski. I have been impressed with the way Curtis Perry has hit the glass and has also drawn some fouls and has scored on lob passes. Tommy Heinsohn has seen enough. He's going to put the leader back in. Hondo Havlicek. Nara Hurd, pull up, high arch. Pretty shot. 42-26. I didn't give Gar Hurd enough credit the other night in Phoenix. Spectacular game. He truly is becoming one of the all-stars in this league. Curtis Perry was there intimidating on defense. Adams gives it up to Lumpkin. Quick pass to Westfall. Great control by Paul Westfall on a pass from Lumpkin. It's 42-28. Hold on. That's eight straight points for the Phoenix Suns, Brent. Scott. Collins with an offensive board, and Adams came right up into his face and threw the foul. Let's take a look at the last pass break. Some shot that Paul Westfall makes. Here's Alvin Adams throwing it out to Lumpkin. Watch him lead the pass over now to Westfall. A little bit ahead of him. He bobbles it, gets it with his left hand. Great body control. Lays it up, and it crawls right on over the rim and in. A lot of people may think that's walking. 
but just merely the fact that you touch the ball does not constitute an illegal step. You must have control in order to travel. If you don't have the ball, you can't walk with it, can you? I didn't think it was walking. All right, I just want to let the fans out there know that it wasn't walking. <laughs> it's 43 to 28. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. Red Arback on round ball. Jack Whitaker for the Belmont is Westfall gets inside again. 43 to 30, so ever so slowly. The Phoenix Suns clawing their way back into this game. May have missed that as I picked up on Westfall. Charlie Scott traveled, he couldn't control the ball, but let me remind everybody that Jack Whitaker will report on the Belmont at halftime. Let's watch this last play, Alvin Adams with the ball, watch on the weak side, there's a good screen set by Perry. It frees Westfall going to the hoop. There should have been a switch that time by John Havlicek. Adams has it knocked away and retrieves it. It's amazing to think Alvin Adams would be a senior in college. We had a whistle blown away from the ball. So Jojo White. White was holding. Let me check the team fouls. One against Boston, one against Phoenix, and seven minutes and nine seconds. They have come to play basketball and not foul each other in this three contest. Seconds. Somebody wanting three seconds called. Alvin Adams. Beautiful play by Alvin Adams. You notice how he made a great fake with the ball to draw the defensive out of position. Went to the basket. Probably behind hoop. some of the timeout right now, Rick. And just as you pointed out, Phoenix had to be patient. They were, and they've cut it. It's 43-32, 6.57 to go. When you spray paint, what you want is a beautiful, smooth finish without runs and drips. That's why I switched to Krylon. Look at this test. Krylon versus the other leading brand. See, the other brand is running, but Krylon's fast dry formula helps you avoid runs and drips. With Krylon, even an amateur can get a professional finish. Beautiful. Krylon for the beauty. Grant, we've got two rookies playing on this championship team, one of which, of course, is Ricky Sobers, and the other, the rookie of the year, Alvin Adams. In 1957, there was also two rookies on a championship team. Let me have those two rookies. In just a moment, Paul Silas scored, drew the foul. He will come to the free throw line with a chance for the three-point play. What I'm doing here, folks, is trying to grab a few seconds so I can think. In 57, were the Celtics That's right. involved? And, and one see. of those two rookies was the rookie of the year. How about Havlicek? Was he a rookie in 57? I give up. The two rookies were Heinsohn and Bill Russell. Oh, of course. Tommy and the Heinsen. rookie of the year was not Russell. It was Heinsohn. right. Here's Westfall giving it to Curtis Perry. 46-32. There's our rookie. Mendy was just talking about him. 46-34. It's a 12-point lead. Celtics were up by 20. A 36-point explosion in the first quarter if you just joined us. Scott left baseline, and Garfield Hurd was there on the defense. Westfall back down. Suns are coming back in a hurry as Curtis Perry came up, and that's four fouls on Charlie Scott. Well, the and gamble by Tommy Heinsohn has not paid off, Brent. Put Charlie back in the ball game, trying to get his starting lineup in. Here's Westfall going to pass off to Perry. You'll see him come into the picture. Charlie Scott moving over, definitely moving on the play. No question about that foul. Why doesn't Scott try to avoid the foul on that particular play? Now, he didn't say anything against Van Arsdale. He committed a foul. He maybe should have given him the field goal. And here we have the same play again. I think there was two fouls he committed that he certainly could have avoided. Well, without any question, but he's a very emotional young fellow, and he's trying to work hard. And uh -huh. Tom Heinsohn is talking to him on the bench right now. Trying to get him to calm down. Give it up, and here come the Suns. Garfield Hurd. And it is 46 to 39. Celtics back quickly. Stakem working with White. Stakem gives it up and out of bounds. And here come the Suns. And Heinsohn wants a timeout. And as the Celtics go over to talk to Tommy Heinsohn, let me make a point about Charlie Scott and Heinsohn. You saw him talking to him. Down in Phoenix, Tommy was up screaming and agreeing with him. Tonight, he's trying to calm him down. It's a different Tommy Heinsohn in the Boston Garden. I think I said the biggest lead was 20 points. Actually, Boston led John McLeod and Al Bianchi's Phoenix Suns by 22 points. And in four minutes and 19 seconds, they have whittled that to seven. Yes, and they've done it with the fast break. They've got easy opportunities, making the steals, good defense, playing Boston's style of play. 
Celtics trying to slow them down with some pressure in the backcourt. Lumpkin goes down. Phoenix bench screaming there was a foul. Lob pass intended for Garfield Hurd and John Havlicek is pushing over there. They were screaming uh, for a foul from the Phoenix bench because Dave Cowens thought they thought he ran right over Lumpkin. In the last 345, Phoenix has outscored Boston 19 to 4. Two great veterans there, huh? Van Arsdale and Havlicek. This time it's a misfire. Nelson saves it. Havlicek. And Curtis Perry got back. Hondo just couldn't quite get the handle on it, but was he wide open? And he was, and they didn't see him quite soon enough, and the ball was on his fingertips, and Gar Hurd ran into the ball and knocked it out of his hands. That was the break for the Sun. Celtics had an easy chance there. White. I would say, Rick, that Jojo White is forced to the scoring from the left side of the court as opposed to the right side. He loves that position on the other side, away from his right shooting arm. Interesting observation, because the last second shot in Phoenix was from the right side. Four minutes and 50 seconds, first half. Silas was up there with Garfield Hurd. That is covering a man like a blanket. You could not ask for a better defensive job than what Paul Silas did just there. 48 to 39, 446, game five, NBA championship. Game six, live on CBS, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday. Van Arsdale, the missed shot by Collins after Paul Silas had tried to control the offensive end. Bill Lumpkin, a second year pro from Miami of Ohio, formerly the Portland Trailblazer. Nelly knocked it away from Curtis Perry. Turn around by Adams, pretty play. It's 48 41, it's back to within seven. 4 11. And Nate Hawthorne will check in for John McLeod's son. JoJo was working hard on Lumpkin, and he finally put it in. Well, Minnie, we did it again. You talked about the right side. He plumped one in there. He used the glass, though, Rick. He didn't switch the net. That's true. Adams again. Quick release on that shot. White right side. Again, the right side. Rick, what are you going to do about that? Well, this shows you that JoJo is a heck of a player. 52-41. Adam. Iron. Here comes JoJo. He can shoot from the right. He can lead the break all alone. And Paul Silas got back with a good effort on Garfield Hurd. He came rolling down there like an express train as Dennis Autry gets up. There was a foul call. Nate Hawthorne in along with Autry. Now let's watch the play. JoJo driving in, makes a good drive to the hoop, lays it up, gets a bad break on the shot. It rolls off. Gar Hurd's in position. You see Silas into the picture. He jumps up, and his momentum carries him into Gar Hurd, picking up the foul. And as the fourth foul on the Boston Celtics, as Kevin Stakem also comes into the game for Boston, replacing JoJo White. Let me set the Phoenix attack. Lumpkin and Van Arsdale. Hawthorne, Autry, and Adams. John McLeod goes to his two-center offense. Board power. Van Arsdale takes the shot. Havlicek rebound. Gets past Van Arsdale. Comes in between Autry and Adams and crashes into that basket support as he went down, striking it with his shoulder. John saw a little bit of an opening, and he just knifed right in between the two defensive players. Let's watch him again. There he is with the ball, a little opening. And he just squeezes his way through there, picking up the foul. Took a pr pretty good fall on the ground, but he just did manage to avoid the support, Brent. Ricky Sobers back on the floor for Phoenix. Havlicek on the line because of Dennis Autry's foul. We were in the locker room watching John Havlicek get ready for the game, Brent. And he is the most fastidious type of player you ever want to see, or an individual. He has all his toiletries in height, from left to right, in size. And not only that, but when he gets in dress, he takes his socks, he puts them on individual hangers or hooks. Unbelievable sight to watch him get ready. He also has his basketball game in order as he picks up Ricky Silver. Stakem has Lumpkin. Silas will take Audrey. 
Sobers out far from the glass. Allen, 54-41. Nelson. And Adams got a hand on it, and here come the Suns. Collins was battling, and it's a backcourt foul as he came back out to get it. That is going to be the third foul. And it was committed in the backcourt. I believe they called a foul on Silas Brent and not Collins because I see two over there. Take a look at that. Well, it was actually Paul Silas got the first foul reaching in, and Dave came over and made contact. But the foul, I believe, was called on Paul Silas, his second. Heinzen checking with the scorer's table, too, just to make sure. But the two went up, and that would be official. It is on Paul Silas and not Cowens in the backcourt. I think there could have been a foul call maybe earlier. When the uh, Celtics had the ball, I think both officials were blocked out and didn't see one of the Celtics get fouled, therefore causing the turnover and the backcourt foul. Don Nelson looked like somebody grabbed him as he went through on the arm, and he threw the ball right into the hands of the Phoenix Suns. It's an 11-point Celtic lead. Two minutes and 18 seconds to go until halftime. Red Arback, Jack Whitaker on the Belmont. Halftime, Sunny Hill with highlights. Dave Collins faking away on Adams. Not only got the field goal, but drew the foul on the rookie. That is Adams' third foul, the fourth team foul. And Garfield Hurd will come into this basketball game. Andre, remember, is already on the floor. As Dave Cowens down low with Alvin Adams. He gets the ball reverses, gives a good fake, gets Alvin Adams in the air, hits him on the hand, and Alvin Adams violated one of the primary rules in defensive basketball. Do not leave your feet. A 14-point Boston Celtic lead. Phoenix had whittled it to seven. Then the Celts. Got seven more on the lead in. Suns must be very, very patient here and try and get a good shot. That is not a good shot. And again, it is Collins and Hawthorne with a spectacular defensive play, and then he was all over John Havlicek. He was frustrated on the miss. That's a mistake that a young basketball player will make like Nate Hawthorne. Tremendous play you'll see again. Rick Barry tell us about it. Yes, here we go. Here's the shot coming off. Cowens with the ball, makes the pass. A super interception by Hawthorne. He rushes himself and takes the shot. And in his anxiety to go get it back, he knew he missed it. He just climbs right up John Havlicek's back as if he were a ladder. And he's done that in several playoff games. He's got great jumping ability. And he just gets carried away with his emotion trying to go to those offensive boards. Havlicek made absolutely sure that he drew that foul. He crumpled up down there. Phoenix Suns, of course, in trouble right now with their two top scorers in the series so far. Westfall and Alvin Adams sitting on the bench, both in foul trouble. And the Suns trailing 59-43 with 1.35 to go in the first half of game five. Sobers forcing some shots from the outside. The Suns have gone away from their patient pattern of style. Get some easy layups. Cowens throws one up, and Autry and Silas were battling underneath. That's going to be the third foul, I believe, on Paul Silas. Picking up a foul as he crashes into the boards. And you have to give the Celtics credit now because what they've done is reverse this trend that was taking place with the Phoenix Suns chopping that lead down to seven points from 22 in four minutes. In the last four minutes, they built it back up to 16. Havlicek drawing off, uses a couple of seconds to exchange conversation and thoughts with Tommy Heinsohn and John Killalay. Autry. Grant with that blue vested suit that John McClure is wearing over there, looking so handsome. You would never guess he's a basketball coach. If you met him on the street, you'd think he was a business executive or possibly an attorney. Very good looking, sharp suit. 59 45, 117. Dowling. Autry was out there, good defense, Dennis with control. That's where they like to see Dave Cowens, I'm sure, rather than underneath the basket. He's caused a lot more problems underneath. Inside of a minute left in the first half, Boston Garden. Battle for the loose ball. JoJo White with control. Last 40 seconds in the first half coming up. Silas calling the play because he picked up the signal from Tommy Heinsohn. Got a hurry with the shot clock. A factor. Nelly was crashing to the floor. 
pain on his face as he went down. John Nelson once again with a good fake. Let's take a look at this play again. You watch him get the ball inside. He'll turn, give a good fake with the ball, gets his man off his feet. Hawthorne drives in as he goes in. Gets hit down low and takes a pretty good shot when he hits that floor. He hit it with his right elbow, his back, and his head also crashed down as he went to the floor. I must say that I do not think it a coincidence that the commissioner, Larry O'Brien, is in attendance tonight, and both coaches have stopped their complaining. The referees are going unnoticed in this game, and the ball players are playing basketball. Larry walked away toward the locker room, and I have a hunch something was said. Well, John McLeod, I think, said it well after the last ball game. Of course, he just got finished winning his second playoff game and evening the series, but he said, I complained in the first two ball games. Heinzen has done it in the last two. Why don't we just be quiet and give the game back to the players? And that's exactly what has happened. And it's been a fine basketball game to this point. With the Celtics having two good surges, the Phoenix has won, and that's been the difference right now. Rick, I've always said that no one pays to watch a coach coach, no, a referee referee. They come in to see the ball players play. That's no, what I try to tell the officials, too. <laughs> we don't listen sometimes, right? Why don't they listen to I you? I don't know. <laughs> 25 seconds, first half. Brent Musburger along with Rick Barry and Mindy Rudolph from the Boston Garden. This is game five of the NBA championship. Game six, Sunday. Soberts and Cowens was out there, and Ricky forced another one up. And Nate Hawthorne, and he had one foot in the backcourt. As he was battling to save it, there was one foot over the line. There's no question about this. There's the play. He picks up the ball, makes a good interception. Can't get control of himself. He hits the floor, and he continues to go. And we'll watch his foot. The left one will step back over the half-court line, and that is a violation. He had possession, and you're not allowed to cross back over that half-court line once you have it in the front court. Paul Silas will rest the last few seconds of the first half. Kaberski may have brought a play in, but it doesn't matter. JoJo is going to take it. I am impressed with Nate Arthur. He showed some skills here. That shot, of course, not good. The buzzer had gone off beforehand. So in the Boston Garden, the Celtics get 36 in the first quarter. Then their 22-point lead is cut to seven. But now they open it up again. It's 61-45 at the half. Tonight's NBA championship game is sponsored by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Dotson, America's number one selling import for cars and trucks. Dotson saves. Dinah Monday at 4. Sunny Hill, we saw a lot of surges in that first half. Boston opening up and really establishing their running game very early. What do you have for us? Well, we have some excellent highlights, Mindy, but I'd like to say on behalf of the Phoenix Suns that they bend, but they don't break. I've gained additional respect for the Phoenix Sun players because I've seen them come out and do what they've done in the first half of this ball game. Get way down, but yet still still hang in there. And I think our highlights will show what we're talking about. I'm sure there are a lot of fans in Phoenix that like to hear you say that. Well, I thought the series would be over in five games, to be honest with you. But the two games they won at home showed me a lot of basketball. John Havlicek came out and showed people that he was ready to play basketball, and he was the man that was responsible for getting the Boston Celtics off wing. The middle was open, and here's a classic give-and-go basketball, Scott, to JoJo White. And JoJo has been the most consistent player in the playoffs and doing a fantastic job. Alvin Adams, the man who has been the glue man for the Phoenix Suns, he kept him in the first half when it was very difficult for the Suns to do anything. And here we see Alvin Adams doing it again as he finds Westfall down low. And at this stage in the second half, the Suns score 12 straight points. Paul Silas, and here's that man, JoJo White, again. And honestly, Mindy, I can't say enough for the way that JoJo White has orchestrated, played defense, and do just what he's doing right now, put that ball in the hoop. And Dave Cowens, Mr. Aggressive, able to get down low and establish a position. Not only did he score on this play a three-point play, but he also was the dominant factor on the boards. And the Celtics just showed what can happen when a team comes out collectively to play good basketball. Sonny, what can we look forward to the second half, the Celtics and the Suns? Well, I expect the Phoenix Suns to do as they have been doing, stay in there. I don't think the fact that the ball game right now has a big lead in favor of the Boston Celtics to keep the Phoenix Suns from doing what they've showed all of us, I think, Mindy, the fact that they've been, but they don't break. Yeah, they do have a lot of poise. I was amazed. 
how well they stayed in the game after being behind as far as they were, Sonny. I think they're making all of us believers. I know Rick Murray said to me before this series started, Sonny, they will stay in there. And I said, no, nah, I guess the Boston Celtics defense and aggressive play, they won't be able to do it. And you know I said that that meeting, right? I know you all did, right. right. And we've got these Boston fans cheering this club as they come back onto the court. And Brett Musburger has something on us with the Belmont Stakes. Brett, what do you got going for us? Well, it's going to be a very busy weekend here at CBS Sports. Game six, of course, will be coming up on Sunday afternoon. Then, as Mindy mentioned, we have the Belmont Stakes tomorrow afternoon. And Jack Whitaker will be heading up our core of announcers down there to see if Bowl Forbes can win the second leg of the Triple Crown. Of course, he earlier captured the Kentucky Derby. Tomorrow evening, about 20 minutes of six, a horse will cross this finish line first in the 1976 running of the Belmont Stakes. Most people think that horse is going to be Bold Forbes. Bold Forbes, the Kentucky Derby winner. Bold Forbes, who won the Derby in a strong wire-to-wire -wire performance. Bold Forbes, who dueled with honest pleasure in a very fast mile at the Preakness and then finished third. But that's the consensus, and it's assured now that Bold Forbes will be the favorite going off tomorrow. However, nine other horses have seen to challenge him, perhaps just to pick up second and third money, or perhaps there's a lingering doubt that this great speed horse may not be able to negotiate the mile and a half, the longest of the Triple Crown races. At any rate, that's what we're going to be here to find out tomorrow afternoon from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and we invite you to watch the 1976 Belmont Stakes here on CBS. Now we are back at the Boston Garden, and of course tomorrow the Belmont Stakes will be on at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And again, that horse that I have been telling everybody about, Mackenzie Bridge, listed at 10 to 1. Arrow not a 20 to 1 choice. I'll tell you, folks, watch out for the long shots in this race. Bull Forbes may have a little difficulty going the distance, and I don't even know that much about horse racing. Let's take a look at the rest of the field now. Bull Forbes, of course, will be a heavy favorite tomorrow in Belmont. A lot of fans of Cordero will be there. Best laid plans, quick card, great contractor, and majestic life. That, of course, is a colt out of Majestic Prince. One time won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, and then unfortunately broke down and lost to Belmont. Want to pass along a word of congratulations to Al Adels, the coach of the Golden State Warriors, who will have a second job next year. He has been named the general manager of the Warriors. Now, he replaces Dick Vertlieb, and I thought Vertlieb did a fine job out there in the Oakland area, but he wants to go back up to Seattle. That's a part of the country that he loves very dearly. He's going to work with a new Major League Baseball team up there. So Dick Vertlieb and Hal Childs, who did such a job with the Warriors leave, and now Adels has got a dual role. Back with the second half of the Hi, this is a commercial for Goodrich Radial Tires. I know nothing about tires. I know a good joke when I... 61 to 45, if you take a look at the halftime statistics, the Celtics shot over 60% in the first quarter, didn't they, Rick? Yes, they were shooting around 61% in that first quarter, and that was the run that, of course, gave them that 22-point lead. Then the Phoenix Suns came back and battled into contention, cutting it down to seven. And you have to give credit, of course, to the Celtics. They came back and pushed it back to nine again. Of course, the Suns had two of their top scorers on the bench, Adams and Westfall. There you see the scoring right there with Adams and Perry leading the scoring for the Phoenix Suns. And, of course, the man who started his first playoff game in a long time, John Havlicek with 17 points. And he certainly helped to ignite them. But you have to give credit to all of them. All of the Celtics played exceptionally good basketball in that first quarter. Anybody that came in the ballgame was doing the job. They really come out smoking that first quarter, didn't they, fellas? Havlicek now 11 points behind Will Chamberlain for third spot on the all-time playoff scoring list. 61-45. Boston Celtics trying to win their 13th title in 20 years. They're coming out again, putting that pressure on. Going to set the Phoenix attack. Adams giving it to Westfall, along with Sobers, Darhurt, and it was Curtis Perry who went up, controlled the offensive glass, put it down, and drew the foul from Paul Silas. Let's watch this play again. Silas is fourth, Rick. There's Havlicek leaning on him inside. Still leaning, the ball bounced around. He just keeps moving, keeps battling, and is able to sneak in between the two men to get the ball and put it back in. That's his first offensive rebound of the game. He only had one rebound in the last ball game down in Phoenix. He already has five now. Second half, just underway. Scott White, Cowens, Silas, and Havlicek on the attack for the Celtics. 
West ball with control after the turnover by the Celtics. Turnovers plagued Boston in the two games played down in Phoenix. Offensive foul, backing in. That is the fourth foul on Alvin Adams, and that brought both Al Bianchi and John McLeod off the bench. They were looking for a foul on Cowan. Instead, their top scorer is now in foul difficulty. This is the earliest that Alvin Adams has been in foul trouble in this series. Scott controlled the offensive glass. Had a tough angle that time on the board. Couldn't get it up high enough. Ricky Sobers penetrates. And he had a hand layup. Makes it 61 to 50. It's an 11 point Celtic lead. 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. What's silence? Well, they're insulting him. He's been devastating, right? Yes, Brett, they're insulting him as they did in the previous four games, but he's been popping in that outside jumper now. He's made three of four from out there. What a difference that makes against the Phoenix defense. Garfield Hurd, who's assigned to Silas, has been sloughing off and taking a driving lane away from Collins. But if Silas hits outside, it's different. Gar Hurd, on the other hand, has been a top-notch offensive man ever since he came to Phoenix from Buffalo. The sun's turned red hot. He was the final ingredient John McLeod needed. Charlie Scott. slowing it down like Adams he would have been a senior in college both players gave up their final year of eligibility to come into the NBA this year's draft will be on Tuesday Jojo White this is on the layup it's 63 52 9 35 to go in the third quarter Perry turns around Just watch the Suns wreck on defense, how they always try to cut off the nearest passing lane. That's what John McLeod teaches them. His own principal defense, and again you see Paul Silas left alone outside, and he's tough out there tonight. It has been a big factor in this basketball game. Yeah, they, need to 52. they must go out and pick him up, and if they do that, it's going to allow Cowan to get Alvin Adams underneath one-on-one. -on -one. Westfall. Sobers in control. It's a defensive switch now, and Havlicek is going with Adams inside. The herd got Paul Silas up in the air and then came with the shot, and Paul Silas is in serious foul trouble. He has five. Take a look at this play right now. Garher gets the ball, makes a good little fake to the right side, puts the ball down, head fake. Gets him up in the air, on top of him for the foul, and he has trouble. That fellow's name, Mindy? Gorilla Monsoon. It sounds like a stormy ape. I mean, does that, <laughs> does that lay on you any, anywhere at all? I tell you, I'm going to watch the spectacular. Tommy Heinsohn gets a minute. He'll watch it, too. All right, here come the Celtics. It's 65-55. 10-point Boston lead. 8.15 to go. Silas has been the Celtics point producer for the field so far. Jimmy Yard is in on the attack. <laughs> How about that? Just as long as it goes in, it counts. Hard taking Perry. Now he goes back on Adams, and Havlicek will run with Curtis. Curtis rolled in a pretty hook shot that time. Difficult to defend the man if you allow him to get that good position coming across the middle. Rondo, pull up jump shot. Charlie Scott driving to the basket. Heard was there the first time. And Alvin Adams with control. And it is hot and heavy. 
underneath. Technical foul has been called against the Phoenix bench. That is the sixth technical foul in this series. The reason for that, Brent, is that John McLeod and Al Bianchi really were upset. They thought that Dave Collins fouled Alvin Adams on the rebound, and they kept yelling. Now, the only thing I question here, Mindy, I'm not saying the technical is wrong. I think it was right. But it looks like Phoenix may have had a first a fast break opportunity. Shouldn't the official wait until the play has gone dead? Well, actually, there was no advantage on the Phoenix Suns. They had nobody down court, and the ball was in the backcourt with a lot of Celtics around. And I really do think that McLeod had a complaint coming because probably what the officials did not see was Collins' hands down on Adams' hips. That's where the ball took place, down low, not up top. Scott tipped the pass from Sobers. Adams. Heinsohn is screaming that he traveled. Switched over on Collins and Alvin Adams now has Havlicek and Havlicek drives into him trying to draw that fifth foul on him. Jimmy R. Taken down by Perry. It looked like he came pretty close to doing it. It seemed like Alvin made some contact in that play. Heard. Havlicek with control for the leaders. Intercepted by Sobers, who stepped into the lane. Rush ball, and Jimmy Ard blocks it. Knocked off the glass. Suns control. Ard with a short shot that missed him. Cowan. Jimmy Ard's three of four from the field. Make it three of five with that air ball. I think the crowd forced him to shoot that ball. They started yelling because he was open, but Jim didn't want it. Overs. And Nate Hawthorne, who displayed some athletic skills in the first half, will be checking back in. Well, if the Suns turn to spurt, they've knocked off nine points of that Celtic lead here with 5.42 to go in the third quarter. Have a check deep at the shot clock buzzer. Got it off in time. First ball back to Ricky Sobers. Double move and got the basket and the foul. What a play by the rookie, Ricky Sobers. A little bit of a pump shot that time. Rick, I don't know how he got the ball off. Well, let's take a look at it and see. Here he goes cutting down the middle. It's a good pass. He goes up in the air, has to double clutch as Havlicek comes in front of him, throws it up with a nice soft touch. He goes in, picks up the foul, a chance for a three-point play. Back in the Boston Garden, five minutes and 19 seconds left in the third quarter. It is 68-63. Phoenix has clawed its way back into that basketball game behind John McLeod and his assistant Al Bianchi. For fouls, we have Silas of the Boston Celtics sitting right now with five. Charlie Scott with four. Collins with two. Adams with four. Westball with three. Sobers closes the lead again by adding that free throw after that beautiful layup. Now it's a two field goal game. Fans have been quiet in the garden. The Celtics could use their support right now. Lynn McDonald, number 30, with the ball on the floor, gave it up to Hondo. Collins inside wanted it, and Alvin Adams was there with the defensive block. That was some great block by Alvin Adams. Suns can pull to within two points. Sobers came down, and it was offense using the arm to force away the defensive player. Let's watch Dave Cowens in that last play. You see him get the ball inside. They try to front him, send two men at him. He comes along. Adams hangs back, times perfectly, and just a super block by Alvin Adams. Ricky Sobers on the last one had his man beat. He used his arm and he hooked him. It's a good call by the officials. Four-point basketball game. The first Cowens open inside, just couldn't get a handle on it. Whistle blew. Cowens was fouled. One shot play, he says, and of course, neither team is yet in the penalty, so they'll go out over on the side. He was not shooting. He just couldn't quite get the ball back up in the air quickly enough. Sometimes you just can't find the handle, as you pointed out. It's, I don't know why that happens, but it just does. That's just the first 
this foul in the quarter on Phoenix, contrary to the other two games we saw out there, Brent. Not too many fouls this particular ball game. Curtis Perry gives it to Sobers on the steal, and Perry forcing the turnover to the rookie. Tommy Heinsohn with a timeout. The situation is this. The Boston Celtics had led it by 22. It was cut to seven, back up to 14. Now, suddenly, it's two points. 4-13 to go in the third quarter. Brent, it's amazing how these games can fluctuate up and down. Boston hasn't scored from the field in 348, and Phoenix has outscored them this third quarter 21 to 7. Ricky Sobers has matched the entire Celtic team. Alvin Adams had control, and he was fouled back there, and that is in the backcourt, and I saw a very small core of Phoenix fans over there behind their bench who were up as the team came out following that timeout, urging this club on. Alvin Adams following that backcourt foul, coming up to the free throw line. It's 68 to 66. Well, aside from the poor shooting, as you saw, Phoenix now shooting 67% to 19 or so for the Celtics. The Celtics bugaboo in the last two games down in Phoenix. Turnovers has hurt them in the third quarter. They've turned the ball over four times in the early going, and that really hurt them because Phoenix converted into field goal. We are tied in Boston. 3.58 to go in the third quarter. An amazing turnaround. It's the first tie in the ball game, Britt. Dick Van Arsdale, Rick has checked in. Paul Westfall will take a rest for John McLeod. You see what the Celtics come up with. From the perimeter, they moved it. And Steve covers to something. Steve got that shot because Gar Herb is dropping in the middle to clog it up, and they got the ball to the open man for the jump shot. Good ball movement by the Celtics. Murray wants it. McDonald is fronting him. Shot clock goes down inside of five. Silvers goes for nine points. Not this time. Collins out, let the Whiters breaking. Van Arsdale got back on defense and knocked it out of bounds. No foul, even though the crowd wants it. Let's watch the defense on Cowens. Look at the three men of Phoenix right around Dave Collins. You see Gar Hurd is already dropping in. The ball goes out to Kaberski, who's open to the jumper. Quick shot by McDonald off the inbounds pass. Steve Kaberski. Heard to Van Arsdale and Charlie Scott ready to come back into the game. Phoenix trailing it by two points. Inside of three minutes left, third quarter. Game five, NBA championship. Perry goes for the tie. Controlled by Gar Hurd. And Alvin Adams. And finally, the Celtics have got the ball. Jojo White. Iron. Collins controls the offensive rebound and hooks it in. It's a four-point Celtic lead. You noticed something in that last series, Brett. There were three Celtics who had open shots and didn't take them. I think they're playing just possibly a little too cautious at this point in the ballgame. Nate Hawthorne ready to check back in for the Sun. Crowd chanting defense. Adams in the air, and it's a two-point Celtic lead with two minutes and ten seconds to go. The man the Celtics are missing right now is Paul Silas. The Suns are getting a lot of second opportunities on the board, and they certainly miss Paul on the defensive boards and offensive boards as well. Silas with five fouls on Tommy Heinsohn's bench. It's four points. It's 74, 70, 145. You are watching a team that finished only two games above 500 in the regular season battle for a championship. They are a wild card team, and they are within two points of the Boston Celtics in game five in the Boston Garden. One of the most incredible comebacks in all of sport. Wild card, dueling the dynasty for an NBA title. Cross court, Kaberski. Cowan, double team. And Curtis Perry on the turnover as again those Suns clog the inside passing lane. Inside pass off of Sober's hands and out of bounds. Nate Hawthorne and Charlie Scott check in. Hawthorne for Phoenix and Scott for Boston. We don't see very shortly a zone warning against the Phoenix Suns. They are really clogging up that 16-foot lane and blocking off.
stop everything. Let's watch for it and see if it happens. Clock moves inside of a minute, third quarter, Boston Garden. Wright tries to penetrate and is cut off there. Scott tries to get in, and Van Arsdale's got him, but he bounced off, and Scott had daylight. That was all individual move that time by Charlie Scott. 76 to 72, four point Celtic lead. Shot clock down, good defense. And again, Ricky Sobers gave it up down there by the end line. Those two turnovers now have hurt the Phoenix Suns. Alvin Adams throwing the ball away, Ricky Sobers losing the ball, and they have not gotten an opportunity to shoot the ball at the basket. John McLeod. Signals the play. That's his shrill whistle that you picked up on our microphone. Collins wants it. Collins inside move on Alvin Adams drew it. That is the fifth foul on the rookie of the year, Alvin Adams, and that's exactly what Dave Collins wanted to do. And now, of course, is going to put Alvin Adams on the bench. Dennis Archer will be coming back in the ball game. Let's watch the play again. You see Cowens with the ball. This man cuts through. He makes the move to the inside. Adams gave him the inside position, left his feet, and made contact with Dave. Good call by the official. Cut the arm. 76 to 72. The pressure is on number 21 of the Phoenix Suns. Dennis Autry must take Cowens. You don't think that he's an intense individual? Do you see that look on his face? Five-point lead, Sobers against the clock, threw one up that would not fall. But it was a splendid comeback by the Phoenix Suns. They whittled away, crawled right back into it. We've got 12 minutes of action at 77-72 Boston. As you look at the third quarter shooting statistics, and Mindy, what's the report on Keith Erickson from the Suns locker room? It's been diagnosed as a sprained ankle, how severely they don't know as yet. They're packing it ice. But there's one thing we do know for sure, Brent and Rick, he will not be back for the rest of this game. Crowd in the Boston Garden coming to its feet, all of Phoenix. The Boston Celtics have not lost a playoff game in the Garden this year. Their playoff record coming into this game, 10 and 6. Phoenix 10 and 7. Phoenix played the extra game against Golden State. Collins comes up on Autry and puts the Celtics in command by 7. 79 72. Adams on John McLeod's bench with five fouls. Over Westfall's head and out of bounds. Three out of the last four times the Phoenix Suns have come down the floor, they have turned the ball over in the late in the third quarter and early here in the fourth. And those type of plays are the ones that kill you in the long run. Collins waiting for someone to break open. Scott finally had to come around him. And there was an offensive foul against David Collins. Let's watch the replay on this. Now watch Dave Cowens as he hands off, turn into Dick Van Arsdale. Didn't look like he made that much of a move that time, Mindy. I disagree, Rick. I think that once you establish that pick, you can't even move three inches, and Cowens did turn around, causing the offensive foul. Nate Hawthorne went up on the missed shot by Westfall and tapped it back in. For Dave Cowens, his third foul. It's 79 to 74. 10 minutes and 45 seconds left in game five. And Collins going to work on Autry. And Steve Kaberski came flying across. There was contact underneath. But Steve Kaberski has demonstrated an ability to get open underneath that offensive board. He has done a good job from the front keeping that ball alive. And I think Garfield heard sloughing in there is hurting, not boxing out. Collins driving, and Gar heard came across that time with the block. Block, shot blockers from the weak side and all the pro basketball, Garfield Bird. As demonstrated with that last play, Bird with the ball, gave it up to Westfall who had daylight, just not falling, and here is Nate Hawthorne. Bring to Van Arsdale and back to Nate. 
Landry out high in the Phoenix offense. Offensive foul on Nate Hawthorne. The Celtics will have it. He was pushing off. It's a five-point Boston lead with nine minutes and 57 seconds left in the game. That young man has a lot of natural ability. He just has to learn to control his motion somewhat. He just gets a little bit too physically involved during some of the basketball games. Collins to work on Autry again. Dennis has it knocked away. Havlicek, Collins down there. Collins threw it up and was fouled, and Autry doesn't like the call. Well, there's no question that Dennis Archer picked up the foul there, but the man who made the play, let's watch is John Havlicek. Well, he can't see him. He kept it alive, and Archer just throws his body into Dave in an effort to prevent him from making that basket. But Havlicek was the man that did the job. He kept the ball alive with his good timing. I'll tell you, Archer is working Collins over pretty good. And a retaliation, Collins is no pussycat. He'll work Archer over pretty good. 81 to 74, Boston over Phoenix. Game six, Sunday on CBS, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, right after the soccer game between New York and Tampa. Hawthorne with Havlicek down on the floor, had an open shot, would not fall. Here comes JoJo. Charlie Scott, pretty move. And John McLeod needs a timeout. At the Phoenix Suns, Failing to put the ball in the basket. The Boston Celtics capitalized on it. Dave Cowens controlling the boards, getting good opportunity shots up the floor. Back in the Boston Garden, Rick. Yes, and the big factor in this ball game, Ben, right now has been Alvin Adams picking up his fifth foul with five seconds to go in the third quarter. And since that time, the Phoenix Suns have not been able to generate much offense. Nine minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Adams still on the bench. I wonder when John McLeod will bring him back. It might depend on the scoreboard. Can't wait too long, Brent. If they fall too far behind, it'll be an impossible task. West ball. Hawthorne leaped over. Great athletic skills. Curtis Carroll. Tapped it back in. It'll count. And there was a foul. Dennis Audrey had established excellent inside position. Let's watch this play again. Hawthorne passes it to Perry, takes the jumper. Cowens must go out on him. He forces his way inside on JoJo. Why, there's JoJo with the push off and Dennis with the tap in. Paul Silas checks back into the game. Like Alvin Adams, Paul Silas has five personal. The only difference being that Silas is out on the court for Tommy Heinsohn and Adams still resting for Phoenix. And I'm sure he would rather be in there playing, Brent. It's a six-point Boston lead. Eight minutes and 44 seconds to play in the Boston Garden. Don't forget the Belmont tomorrow afternoon on CBS. Collins. And there was contact. Dennis Autry hit his arm as he came up. Dave Collins will come to the free throw line. Four fouls on Audrey. There you go, Dave Collins making the move to the inside. Quickly comes back in to the baseline. Sobers tries to go up. Autry jumping with him, hitting him on the hands. Once again, defensive player trying to make the, sh the shot block. If he was just to allow the man to shoot, he had good defensive position. Make the man score the basket. Don't bail him out on a tough shot. And Hawthorne passing Garfield heard. Heading over toward John McLeod on the Phoenix bench. Another impressive performance by Nate Hawthorne. 84 to 77. We've got eight minutes and 25 seconds to go in the game. Series is tied. Two victories each. It's been a home court series so far. Third shot was short. Collins dominating underneath. Brent Havlicek dragged that sore foot. And it looked to me like he couldn't put too much pressure on it. He's told me in the locker room before the game, uh, Mindy, that during the later stage of a ball game, his foot tends to get tired on him and it seems to give way. And he just doesn't have the strength necessary to do what he'd like to do out there.
Westfall cuts to the basket beautifully with that left-handed shot. He is great on that play because he can come up with either hand, as Rick Barry explained in game four. So far in the second half, John Havlicek has not scored a point for the Celtics. Seven minutes and 35 seconds, and Alvin Adams will check back in. JoJo White makes it Boston 86, Phoenix 79. This shows you how sometimes things don't go well for you. That's the exact same shot JoJo White took in the game down at Phoenix, only it didn't go down there, and here he made it. Autry went to the floor. Back up. Sobers was open on the other side momentarily. They couldn't get to him. Scott with the steal from Westfall. Scott with a pass off to JoJo White. Three-second violation. That's a good call by Richie Powers. He was standing there and counting the seconds out as Dave Cowens and Paul Silas both failed to get out of the three-second lane when Charlie Scott made that bounce pass. And what hurt them was the fact that he threw the ball down, it bounced so high in the air, it took JoJo White another second before he could get the ball. There's Alvin Adams, number 33. Tommy Heinsohn looking on and arguing with referee Don Murphy about a call. It's 86-79. Referees Don Murphy and Richie Powers have been in complete control of this game, and the players and the coaches have concentrated on playing it. Inside the guard herd. Battle underneath. Curtis Perry once, twice, still has control, and in it goes. And he was like a volleyball player. Boy, he had some dedication on that play. There's no way he was going to be denied that basket. Brent, because no one had control of the ball. This shot, controlled by Phoenix, is 86-81. Six minutes and 10 seconds left in the Boston Garden. Sobers was coming in on the drive and gave it up. Lost control of the dribble. Scott over to White who gets inside and Curtis Perry at the other end. Marcel Herbert, another great block shot. Dave Allen. The muscle that is being demonstrated under both of these backboards right now. Here's Jojo. Good ball movement right there by the Boston Celtics. Getting up the floor in a three-on-two situation, taking advantage of JoJo's excellent shooting ability from the baseline as Paul Silas moved the ball to the open man and that's the way the game should be played. Phoenix is not the only city that can explode over its NBA team. Pause in the action, Brandon. Something was thrown on the floor, and Joe Prosky, the trainer for the Phoenix Suns, was out wiping it off. Charlie Scott dove in over there on the pass play. Just one fact that one area that Phoenix Suns have really suffered in here in the later part of the game has been turnovers. Dan Arsdale was trying to pop away from Charlie Scott and was called when he threw that elbow back on him to get some distance. Somebody has thrown a cup on the floor. We'll see Rick see if he can get Murphy's attention to get it off. They don't see it there at midcourt. Here's JoJo White and Collins. We got 5-21, 88-81. Scott in and out. Celtics still with control, and nobody has got that off the floor. And I'm so frightened when I see something like that. Somebody going to slip on it. Here is Collins on a hook shot that went in. 90-81. There it is. Still don't see it. Richie Powers has picked it up and he's going to get rid of it. Now it's 4.53 to go. Here's Perry over to Alvin Adams. Adams in the air. Put it down. 90-83. That still keeps it well within reach for the Phoenix Suns. And fans should realize that when they do something like that, one of their own ball players may get hurt. That's just a silly thing to do in a sporting event. Four minutes and 35 seconds. John McLeod is off the Phoenix bench, kneeling down, watching his defense. Al Bianchi standing. These are vital moments right here. Scott on the turnaround. 
and Perry with control, and here come the Suns. They can pull to within five. We've got 4.20 to go. Westfall patiently signals the play. Collins taking Adams. David has played an incredible game. Here's Westfall on JoJo White with the turnaround, and Paul Silas has come back off the bench, playing with those five fouls, yanked down the defensive board. Lead can swell to nine if the Celts can hit here. Havlicek forced out of the middle, looking to the right side and headed. Big series coming up now for both the Celtics on defense and the Suns on offense. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go in regulation time. A nine-point Celtic lead. Westfall made it seven. Well, the Suns came through with the offense, and this time the roles are reversed. The Celtics, of course, needing to get a good shot, and the Suns must stop them. Ricky Silvers will be checking in. Silas goes down inside, so Hurd has to stay with him, and Collins missed, and Adams control. They got a bad break on that bounce that time. Adams almost traveled, got it off to Westfall. Oh, Westfall with back-to-back -back baskets has made it 92 to 87 right now. Well, the situation now uh, causes a little concern here at Boston Garden as the Suns cut it down to five points. And with two minutes and 58 seconds ago, there's still plenty of time in this basketball game. Tom Heinsohn, I'm sure, trying to get his team to get some inside action going. They've been most successful with the inside game. Phoenix, meanwhile, is going to try to find some way to shut down that inside game, control the defensive boards, and then come down and patiently run their offense, which they do so well. And you have to give the Phoenix Suns credit for hanging tough. This is something they've done throughout the last two playoff series when it looks like they're about to fold or should fold, I should say. They just hang tough, and they have so much confidence in John McLeod's offense that they stick to it, and they seem to be successful in the crucial situations. I noticed the last few times down the court thing also that Collins is not being double teamed or triple teamed as he was earlier, and for somehow they picked up some respect for Paul Silas in this particular game. All I heard is going back to his man, leaving Collins free to wing to the hoop. You saw John McLeod there mapping out some strategy on the paper, and as Paul Westfold said, he feels that the players are an extension of their coach when they're out there on the floor, and I think that's very well put. And tomorrow on CBS, Super Joe Einhorn live with that dangerous motorcycle jump, and then Muhammad Ali against Gorilla Monsoon, a wrestler. That's tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on CBS, and the Belmont at 5 p.m. Of course, the big thing the Celtics have going for them also is that they have so much experience on this ball club. They invariably come up with what has to be a big play for them. They will get the ball inside. They will work around a picture screen. Come up with what has to be a big play for them. They will get the ball inside. They will work around on picture screens, move the basketball, and generally do the right thing. That has been the key to their success throughout the years. This is the noisiest Boston Garden crowd I have experienced this year. They have been somewhat complacent, but then Phoenix made a series of it, and the Boston fans can come alive like no fans in America. Havlicek took it from White inside to Dave Collins, who tried to go baseline past the White, and again the Suns had hands in the passing lane. A five-point difference. You can see the clock on the scoreboard counting down inside at 2.30. Fans chanting defense in the garden. Westfall has had the hot hand. Thought he had it, did not. Silas controlled. There's the man that's so important to that Boston rebounding game. Paul Silas along with Dave Collins. You joined us late. John Havlicek started his first game of the championship series, and the Celtics exploded for 36 first quarter points. Phoenix has been battling to catch up and go ahead ever since. Silas with a miss. They caught him in the third quarter, but they couldn't hold on. And Adams was out with those five fouls. Silvers went in the air and hit the basket. The crowd thought he was guilty of an offensive foul, swinging out that right elbow. It is 92 to 89, a three point game. One minute and 45 seconds to go in the Boston Garden. John McLeod and Al Bianchi are up. Tommy Heitzen up for the Celtics. Jojo up. And Gar Hurd controls. And the Phoenix Suns can pull to within one point. Other timeout. 
has been called in the Boston Garden. Rick and Mindy, I would like to say that I thought the Celtics were extremely impressive when the fast break was operating early in this basketball game. And again, the Suns have kind of regrouped, and they've been getting back extremely well on defense. Well, they are not taking the fast break opportunities they had in the first quarter, Brent, because they're really not controlling the rebounds. And you can't run if you don't have the ball. Exactly right, Mindy. And of course, Phoenix did not shoot the ball very well early in the ball game because of the good pressure put on by the Boston defense. Boston controlled the defensive board and was able to establish their running game. They picked up some steals. And this is what, of course, generates running offense. Uh, listen, Mindy, one of the nice fans here in Boston bought me a whole sack of bagels. I got bagels for you. <laughs> I got bagels for Rick. I got and we got bagels for the director, Sandy Grossman, and the producer, Chuck Milton. We got bagels for everybody. They did a fine job. I would get on that airplane and head back down to Phoenix in some sunshine tomorrow morning. And game six, as we listen to John McLeod. The timeout situation. You know, it's interesting, the end of game four when we were down in Phoenix, a lot of fans were questioning the fact that the Celtics didn't call the timeout. They had called the play prior to that. They said that if Phoenix misses, get down as quickly as you can. The play was to go to Dave Collins, but Garfield heard it sloughed off and double teamed him, so JoJo White took the shot outside. From what he was drawing on the paper, it looks as though they're going to bring either Curtis Perry or Garfield Hurd up to the basketball from the weak side of the floor and then try to run some action on the side of the floor that the forward came from. Let's see if I was able to distinguish his marks on that paper. Rick Foster must remember that Dallas has five fouls. Let's see if they go to work on him. Adams with the ball, and the clock moves down on the right-hand side of your screen. Total time left here. Regulation time of game five. Westfall had it knocked away on a penetration. Celtics come right back on the turnover. They lead game five by three points in one minute and 15 and inside. Scott holding it up now. He has been a much calmer player. He had a long private talk with Red Arback. He has fouled out of every game until this one. Jojo White cuts to the basket and full side has put it down. 94-89. Now it's five points. Suns have a minute to work with. Westfall was coming down the baseline and he was fouled. not shooting and of course they are not yet in the penalty so they'll have it out on the side 14 fouls against Boston three against Phoenix West ball turn around 94 91 Phoenix alive with 52 seconds and a three point Boston lead so that was a big big basket by West ball kept his team in it West ball knocks it away came around behind Charlie Scott Here's Paul back down the other way Paul West ball puts it in and the back down to the floor and through the what a sequence by Paul Westfall. Unbelievable. And that is Charlie Scott committing the foul. Let's watch this play again. Paul Westfall, great defensive behind Charlie, knocks it away. Adams throws the long pass to Paul Westfall. He comes in, drives to the basket. There he goes. He drives up, and from behind, Charlie Scott caught him and knocked him down. And he had a bonus situation. Charlie Scott out of the basketball game. Again, fouling out of all five final playoff basketball games. And now Paul Wessel has a chance to tie this game with 39 seconds to go. And we have going to have some action coming up now. A stunned silence here in the Boston Garden. The Celtics led it by five. Paul Westfall hit it outside. Paul Westfall came back, forced a steal, hit the layup, and now he comes to the free throw line. And he's been a big spark plug. He has scored eight of the last ten points, made the great play, knocking the ball away from Charlie Scott. Two chances to make one to tie this basketball game. That's one of the greatest individual efforts I have ever seen in a basketball game, right there by Paul Westfall. That I race, want to tell you. That race was two years ago when I was doing the playoffs, and Dave Cowens made that unbelievable steal in the backcourt off of a guard on a switch-off play and ran and dove for the ball. Was, that was a fantastic effort. This have to rate along with that. Mindy, were you working that game two years ago? I was working that ball game. Yes, I was. And we weren't too sure at that point whether there was a 24-second violation involved in that game. And there was. And Collins just made a super play. He's that kind of a player. Let's watch here and see what Tommy Heinsohn has diagrammed if we can. Tommy Heinsohn goes to that notepad. There are 39 seconds left in the game. Tied at 94. 
The Celtics led by 22 at one point. The situation right now is this. The Phoenix Suns, of course, must play excellent defense to try to stop the Celtics from scoring a basket. If they are able to do that, make them use up at least 10 seconds on the clock playing tough defense, and if the Celtics do not score, they then will be in a situation where they can take the last shot of the ball game and either go into overtime or win. That would be the ideal situation. From the Celtics' standpoint, they may want to try to come down and get a quick play inside like they were able to do in Phoenix the other afternoon. If they can do that, the other evening that is, they have a situation then where even if they don't score, if Phoenix comes down and does score, they still have the chance for the last shot to tie. Now the play that Tommy Heinsohn wanted at the end of game four was the pass to Dave Collins cutting through the lane and he rolls it up. Now that was taken away because Garfield Hurd had sloughed out of Paul Silas. The crowd urging the Celtics on here in the Boston Garden. The Phoenix Suns must now put a lot of pressure on this inbounds pass. Make it tough to get the ball in. Try to keep them outside. Eat up the clock as much as possible and hope that they miss. And as I pointed out again, Boston's got to try, at least in my opinion, to get the ball to the basket with a good shot in a relatively short period of time to try and take advantage of the clock. Don Nelson will throw the pass in. White, Silas, Collins and Havlicek and Phoenix is not yet in the penalty. Right, Only they have three fouls against them. They have one, but I don't think they should take it right now. They still have a chance to play good defense and save it for the last two seconds if that's what they come up with. JoJo White came out, Sober's on him. Clock starts down. Game is all tied. Adams fronts Collins. Nelson. They're watching for Collins inside. Perry had slucked off. Here's White from the top of the circle. And it was Collins, and it was blocked by Garfield. That's Hurd. a foul. There was a, a foul is being called. Outside. A foul is going to be called, I think. Let's see if Don Murphy's calling. Let's watch Murphy's the replay. Murphy's going over to see Richie Powers. Replay here. Watch. There's Paul. There he is. Dave Collins shoves Garfield Hurd off without any question. Don Murphy made a good call. You see the replay. If we can show that back again, please. We want to take a look at it. Watch Cowan. It's very obvious. Watch his right arm. There's Perry. Watch his right arm. Right there. Takes his arm to give Perry the shove, picking up the foul going over the back. That is Perry with it. Is a gutsy call in the Boston Garden. Well, you bet your life it's a gutsy call, but it was a call that had to be made, and the official was on top of it. The replay shows it. Don Murphy called it from outside. Richie Powers was on top of it and couldn't see it as well as Don could. This is Curtis, Curtis Perry's biggest free throw of his career. Missed it, and it's a one-point game, and immediately Silas has got timeout with 22 seconds. We got 95-94. Now, remember, we got Silas with five, and we got Adams with five. Now, Tommy Heitzen was glaring out at Don Murphy, complaining about that foul, but as Rick and Mindy pointed out on the replay, it was very obvious underneath. No question about it. He's taking a lot of abuse out there for making a good call on that particular play. And, of course, the man who is so upset right now is Curtis Perry. When he missed that free throw shot, he was really hot at himself. And he has good right to be. There's no excuse for missing free throws in situations like that. And I know that Curtis feels bad about it. And now the Suns are faced with a situation where they must play, again, a super series of defense to prevent the Celtics from scoring a basket and taking the lead with the chance to win the ball game. They would have been in a great position to go for the tie had he made that free throw. That's the Tommy Heinsohn diagramming the play that they're going to use here at the end. You can see that Celtic movement and then sort of swinging over to the right side. He could have a Don Nelson or a Havlicek out there. I would imagine it would be a type of play where one of the guards would come down and set the screen inside. They'd like to run this high post play. Cowan's with the ball. JoJo White will come off of the play. If he's not open, the other man may circle around in front of Cowan's coming towards the basket, going around in back of him again to get the jump shot there. That's what it looks like on that play. They love to run that play. And they also have a play where the man can go and backdoor from the weak side if the defensive man turns his head off of that particular And it formation. looks much easier on paper when you haven't got Perry, Van Arsdale, Hurd, Sobers, and Adams as the Phoenix Suns have taken their only lead in this game with 22 seconds to play. An unbelievable turnaround here. The Celtics with 22 seconds. Clock will start when the ball is touched on the inbounds. Havlicek starts the clock. Van Arsdale's got him. Undo up in the air. There was a whistle and he was fouled. Now John Havlicek will come to the line with the Boston Celtics trailing by a point. 
Let's watch the play again. John Havlicek comes off, gets the pass, dribbles to the basket, turns around in a tough shot. Alvin Adams reaches in, catches him on the left arm. Good call by the official. And Alvin Adams leaves the game with 20 points. So rookie Alvin Adams goes to the bench, and Tommy Heinsohn looks on. And if I had to pick one man in all the world to shoot free throws with 19 seconds left, and I was down 95-94, you're looking at it. And Phoenix has one timeout left. I'm sure they'll use it after this free throw. I take offense to that, Brent. <laughs> Rick, you're not in this one. He missed, he missed it, but he's got it back with 17 seconds. They missed the free throw, and Hondo wants the ball. 12 seconds. We're tied in Boston. Collins gave it up to Havlicek, and eight seconds outside. Out. Five seconds. It looks like we may have overtime, although timeout has been called. Three seconds. The clock ticked down. They've got three seconds now. That was definitely a mistake by the Boston Celtics. They had the ball back at a big break as Collins tapped it out. They should have played for the ball to be in the air at the buzzer. They either win the game or they go into overtime. By taking that shot, they have given the Phoenix Suns a golden opportunity to beat the Boston Celtics for the first time in playoff competition this year at Boston Garden. I would have bet you $10,000. In three seconds, Brent, is a lot of time, especially when you get the ball up. Tommy Heinsohn and Curtis Perry there with Richie Powers. Perry was in conversation and Tommy ran down. There's the ball. He calls timeout. There's four seconds on the clock. Richie looks as though he's signaling, or Murphy looks like he's signaling back here for the timeout. He starts to walk and the clock then goes down to three seconds. And that's what the complaining is about. They want the fourth second. Immediately, the coaches of Phoenix came off the bench. And it is the third official who can be conferred with now. Can he, Mindy, in this situation? Yes, he can. And what happened on the play, obviously, Brent, is by the time Murphy blew his whistle to recognize the timeout, a second flicked. And that, and that can happen very, very easily. It was less than a second. It could have been only a tenth of a second. It had to expire. And by the time the official score flicked that switch back, the clock just barely ticked to three. Exactly. I am shocked that Boston not holding the ball and waiting for that last shot. Well, I'm also shocked that John Havlicek missed that free throw. Brent, you know, that's what happens when we talk about things like that. We've seen the snake bite people. I couldn't believe it. And then the ball bounced right back to him out of the hoop. Let's take a look at that sequence again, Rick. All right, here's John Havlicek. Plenty of time left. He's taking this shot with eight seconds to go. That's far too many seconds on the clock. The ball bounces off. We'll get the ball. He's got it. He calls time. He signals timeout. Looks like he's starting to wave the timeout with five seconds to go, and that clock goes all the way down to three seconds. Looks well, like they might have had a pretty good reason to I'm complain. that replay, Rick. Somewhere along the line, we lost a second, yes. Now the Celtic will use that great pressure that they usually put on. Jim Art is in the ball game to pick the man up, taking it out of bounds. It's going to be Gar Hurd. Gar Hurd standing right in front of me here at the table. Jimmy Art is on him. Won't start till it's touched. And Collins is out there, and we've got overtime in the Boston Garden. I will tell you, yes, sir. it's a good thing that Richie Powers did not see Paul Silas calling timeout because there were no timeouts left, and had he given the timeout, there would have been a technical foul, which could have caused the ball game to be lost. It's a good thing he was not looking. Well, I'd like to see this again. Let's take a look at this minute. Here's the sh pass. It was a bad inbounds pass. Three seconds, he bounces around. He's got the ball. Now watch Paul Silas. He definitely signals for timeout. And the official does not grant it. If he had granted it, there's one second to go. He's looking right at Richie Powers signaling timeout. Now, I don't know how Richie Powers did not see that, but the Celtics are very fortunate that he did not acknowledge it, as Mindy pointed out, because that is a technical foul in the NBA, and they would have a technical free throw to help put them ahead by one point. Boy, that would have been something if that would have happened. Wow! Shades of 1974 of game six of a championship that no one will ever forget between Boston and Milwaukee. I had the pleasure of being on the broadcast team for that one, Brenton. I still say in my mind that was the greatest basketball game I have ever seen. The, the intensity, the tremendous pressure situations that developed and the way that the players and the officials and the crowd all responded to them was something that I will never forget. Brent, let's set the scene here now. Each team is allowed two timeouts. 
Each team is allowed to commit three team fouls. Once they commit the fourth team foul, we go into the penalty situation. In the last two minutes of the overtime, they're allowed to commit only one team foul, regardless of the previous number. So we set up with two team, two timeouts, everything with five minutes. We've got an overtime. I'll tell you, this is really something. Even Beth Havlicek and the other Boston Celtic players' wives feel the pressure as we start this five-minute overtime period. And JoJo White's wife comes to her feet. The players come out to center court. For fouls now, keep in mind, Cowens with four, Silas with five, and of course, lost in all the turmoil around the end of that game is the fact that John McLeod's starting center, Alvin Adams, fouled out of the game. Charlie Scott fouled out earlier. So we got two players on the bench. And the OT begins in the Boston Garden. What a series this has become. Collins cutting off. Sun's got their hands on the ball, but again, the Celtics save it. Havlicek to Nelson. Nelson shoots it. And inside, Paul Westfall is hurt. And Paul Silas with another super offensive rebound. That man is incredible underneath those offensive boards. Paul Westfall is limping badly. On the injury other side timeout, of the floor. Rick. Right now, they went to the injury timeout. Interesting point here. If they had called an injury timeout in the second half, they could not call an injury timeout in the overtime. So what will happen is they will be charged with a regular timeout. No penalty, just a timeout. Timeout. They charged it, which is exactly what that conversation was about. Let's take a look and see if we can find out what happened to Paul Westfall. Here's the replay, the pass into Havlicek, it's knocked out. Havlicek crashes into Paul Westfall as he follows through, or as Dave Cowan's crashing into him, as Havlicek gets the ball back, and you see Westfall rolling on the ground, hurt. Back in the Boston Garden with four minutes and 28 seconds remaining of the five-minute overtime, and the Boston Celtics leading the Phoenix Suns by two points. The Suns came back after trailing by 22 points in this ball game. The man who has been the thorn in the side of the Phoenix Suns has been Paul Silas, with his rebounding offensively and defensively. Paul Westfall has gone out with that injury. Sobers, Van Arsdale, Perry, Opry, and Hurd will take it in now for John McLeod. Shot clock down to one. Sobers must hurry. Just got it off at the buzzer. And they have turned it over on the pass up the court on the break. Alvin Adams, the rookie of the year, who fouled out watching from the sideline. Ricky Sobers gives it up to Van Arsdale. Here's Gar Hurd facing the basket. Sobers from deep in the left corner. Nelson rebound. Shot for the Phoenix Suns offense. And without Alvin Adams, they must be very careful. Both Adams and Paul Westfall out for different re reasons. Adams with six fouls, Westfall with an injury. And it's Collins, Havlicek, Nelson, Silas, and White for the Celtics, and Collins. Makes it a four point game. And don't forget, they've also lost Keith Erickson because of an injury. between Perry and Garfield Hurd, and there was a loose ball foul called on Curtis Perry. Once again, the Suns a little bit impatient with their offense, taking two difficult outside shots rather than trying to execute that offense where they get the inside game going. And good defense again by the Celtics, putting the pressure on, forcing the Suns to stay outside. Charlie Scott fouled out, so John Havlicek and JoJo White are working in the backcourt. Paul Westfall back in there, and on the turnover, it's Garfield Hurd with the interception. 99-95, three minutes left in overtime. Hurd and Silas collided, and a blocking foul is called. Side. Paul West 
Foxwell has picked up an offensive foul, Brent, on the move. He ran into Paul Silas as Gar Herb was making the move to the basket. That was just a mix-up on the offense. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Celtics leading in overtime by four. Ricky Sobers drove off. And the Suns have got it on the turnover. Taken away by JoJo White, who comes right back. So many times an offensive player will take the ball up the floor, look ahead of him, and not realize that he's got pursuit from behind. And that time, JoJo White was almost able to make the steal. Two minutes and 24 seconds, and Dick Van Arsdale will check back in for the Suns, who are still trying to score here in overtime. Well heard with that high-arching shot, and they finally get on the board in overtime. It's 99-97, two minutes and 10 seconds. Here come the Celtics and Havlicek. Shot clock down to five seconds. Inside of five. Curtis Perry off the glass with a shot that got Phoenix right back in at 101.99. Just when you get ready to say these guys are out of it, they come back with something. 125. Two-point basketball game in overtime. Here's Paul Silas. West ball jumped over. Nelly gave it up to White. White gives it up to Havlicek, shot clock down to three seconds. John goes up with a missed shot. Silas with a tremendously important rebound at this point. 109, Nelly's shot not there. Cowan's got up, wouldn't fall. Autry with control. The Suns can tie it. Inside of one minute left in overtime. Silas with those five fouls playing guard her. He gave it up to Sobers. Hurd is inside. High arch goes right straight through. It's tied with 45 seconds. We're going to have a timeout here in this overtime. What a performance by both these basketball teams in the fifth game of this NBA championship. The series is tied at two apiece. So is game five in overtime. I would say, Brent, that the strategy right now the Boston Celtics would be to come down, try to get a good opportunity shot within 10 or 12 seconds. And that way, even if you don't score, the Phoenix Suns were to use all 24 seconds on their possession, they would then have the last shot of the basketball game. Quickly, some of the leading scorers, Collins with 24, Havlicek with 20, White with 20, Adams, who fouled out, scored 20, Perry with 19, Westfall with 19. The last 45 seconds of overtime. Silas, Havlicek, White, Nelson, and Collins against Van Arsdale, Sobers, Perry, Hurd, and Autry. Collins outside over Autry. And Curtis Perry got out there, and the Suns have used up their last timeout with 29 seconds to go, and the score tied. And now what will they do strategically, Rick? Well, I would imagine that they're going to use up as much as the clock as possible, try to get down inside, running their offense, try to get the basket with maybe one or two seconds only to go on the 24-second clock. If that were the case, then, of course, the Celtics would only have six or seven seconds to come down and try and generate something on their end. They, of course, would call a timeout to get the ball up at half court to take advantage of that extra 45 feet. And somebody else is hurt over there. Curtis Perry is being attended to, as you see in the right corner of your screen. That looks like a cramp. Like, looks like a cramp in his knee or either calf, and he is being worked on. Phoenix coach John McLeod setting the strategy. More of the same Sunday afternoon on CBS. Game six out of Phoenix, 3.30 p.m. It's a leg cramp. Curtis Perry is having his left calf worked on by Joe Prosky. He's worked very hard here, and here we can see the play being put down on the floor. He's back up. Looks like he's going to be okay. Let's see if we can see this play. There's all the men in their position. Got a head in the way, unfortunately. 
Gonna have a man cut through, come off the screen down by the forward. It's gonna be the guard. That's Paul Westfall. Paul Westfall. for Paul and R for Ricky. Looks like Paul's gonna come down off the screen, down low by one of the forwards coming out to the left-hand corner of, uh, of the court for the jump shot. But when they're going to do that remains to be seen. 29 seconds. The clock will start when it is touched on the inbounds pass. Paul Silas over here on Garfield Hurd. And Kevin Stakem is coming in for the Boston Celtics. Steve Kaperski goes out. So we have Havlicek, White, Stakem, Silas, and Cowan. Autry popped out to take the pass. And let's watch Paul Westfall. Watch the clock go down. Paul is watching it himself. See how far they take the shot clock down before they start the play. And Autry was fouled. Celtics, of course, have that one foul to use. They elected to take it now. Of course, that now gives the Phoenix Suns a new 24 seconds. They won't need it, Rick. There's only 17 right. left. There's only That's 24. Do. There's 17 left. So they can now play to take the last shot and either go into overtime or win the game. So it is down to that. Andre and Hurd, confusion on the inbounds pass. Collins all over Garfield Hurd. Here is Ricky Sobers. Clock goes down inside of 10 seconds. Handful of seconds tied at 101. Sobers gave it up. And the Celtics have used their timeout with three seconds to go. That is the last timeout. Ricky Sobers gave it up as he went over to the left baseline. There's the play again. Well, we saw the play after JoJo had knocked the ball away. Sobers didn't have any place to go. He was in a lot of trouble. Tried to force it, and it did not work. He's got to make sure the ball is caught. We are back for the final three seconds, and Mindy Rudolph has just pointed out that the Phoenix Suns have a foul to give, and they will probably give it Rick Barry right away. They should, and the only thing they have to be careful of is that the man does not begin his shot as they're taking the foul. But they do have one to give. They should put a lot of pressure on. When the ball gets in bounds, if the man tries to put it on the floor, he should attack him right then. The only thing he certain, Rick, that the ball is passed in first, because if it's not, you must shoot that ball. Exactly. And also, got to release. clock doesn't start until we get it touched on there. So that's very important. Here comes Nelson with those three seconds. Start it. Havlicek down to two. Havlicek deep in the corner. Nelson was flying toward the basket. Collided at the buzzer. No foul. No foul underneath. John McLeod thinks that Autry was fouled as Nelson came flying down the lane. And these two teams are going to go into a second overtime. There's John Havlicek coming off. Gar Hurd with him. Goes up, good, leaves his feet. John gets him out of position. He's got the shot, but it just won't go. You see Nelson driving in there, making contact. No foul being called. But I am still surprised that as John Havlicek made that move to the corner, why the Phoenix Suns did not take a foul, especially since Garfield Hurd was in a situation where he did not have to worry too much about fouls because he only has one. I want to tell you, there were three full seconds on that clock. Well, at home, that's supposed to be that way. <laughs> Let's take a look again. Three seconds. The ball given to Don Nelson. Now we'll watch the bounds pass as John Havlicek breaks from the top of the key, catches the ball. Boy, he took a couple of dribbles there before a second even went off the clock. <laughs> That's a good, that's what you call a good timekeeper at home. That's the old Boston 1001. And we're going to go to double overtime. A second five-minute OT. And you can take a look at some of the leading scores right here. Collins with 22. Adams with 20, of course, is out of the ball game right now. Jojo White with 20. John Havlicek with 20. Curtis Perry and Paul Westfall. This has been some ball game. Now, the same thing prevails again, Brent. Each team on the 14th block was into the penalty. Two timeouts again for both clubs. And the man who I think, once again, has been a big key for Boston is Paul Saz has played a lot of minutes with five personal fouls, and he has been a terror on the offensive and defensive boards for those Boston Celtics. R Let me set the lineups as you take still another look at the Sports Spectacular reminder for tomorrow. Super Joe Einhorn and that world record motorcycle jump, Muhammad Ali and the Belmont Stakes, and second overtime underway. Suns win control with Van Arsdale, Sobers, Perry, Hurd, and Autry against White, Havlicek, Silas, Nelson, and Cowan. Autry out far from the back.
basket, gave it to Ricky Sobers. Gar heard on the turnaround short with that high arching shot. I don't know why he doesn't take Paul Silas to the basket. He has five fouls. He doesn't want to pick up that sixth one, and yet he continues to take the outside shot, even though he did make four of the six points for Phoenix in the first overtime. Collins with the ball on the floor, gave it up to JoJo White, who hit and put the Celtics ahead by two in the second overtime. We may play all night here in the Boston Garden. Good thing it's Friday night. All you kids don't have to go to school tomorrow. Just tell your dad to get you another Coca-Cola. Inside to Curtis Perry. Turn around. Battle underneath, and that's the man, Paul Silas. Lead pass to Nelly. Give it up to Havlicek. Paul Westfall will come back in. On the turnover, Dan Arsdale and Perry were right there for the Suns. Sobers takes it back from Perry, gets inside and ties it. JoJo White that time looked like he got screened off on Dave Towns a little bit. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in the second overtime. Nelson went down and there was no foul. The Canarsa really crashed into him, but the officials didn't see it. Shot clock down towards five as Havlin checks in. It's sailing to White. And with three seconds to go, White puts the Celts up by a field goal. Jojo had to put it to the court just one time. 105-103. There are a lot of believers in the Phoenix Suns tonight in the Boston Garden. Sobers put up jump shot, couldn't get inside, put it down, and there was a foul. Boy, the Boston Celtics played some super defense that time, switching out exceptionally well, forcing Ricky Sobers to the baseline. Don Nelson once again going for the block. Now watch Nelson here as Havlicek drives to come off the screen. Watch him jump out. Good defense to this point. Now Sobers veers out. Now instead of just playing good defense with him, he tries to block the shot. Why small forwards want to become shot blockers is beyond me. And he's just Sobers has just put Phoenix up 106-105 in the second overtime. Only the second time in this basketball game that they have been ahead, and we are in double overtime. They're really looking for JoJo White. Collins has it, moving on Autry. Got Autry off his feet. Drew the foul, Bench can't believe it. He is flying off of there with that whistle. Autry packed, and for Autry, that is his fifth foul. And remember, Adams already is out of the game. All right, here's the play again. The ball will go into Cowens from Nelson. Now watch him make his move to the middle. There he makes the move. He'll give a big fake. Autry jumps on him, goes by him. Autry claims that he did not hit him. Officials said he got the foul and caught him on the elbow as Dave Cowens will go to the free throw line. West ball. Going back toward the sideline. Collins has tied it at 106. 227 on the clock. Collins has put the Celtics ahead by a point on those two free throws. Clock moves down to the 220 mark. Sobers and Van Arsdale on the clouds backboard, and Van Arsdale wants to go down in with Havlicek. Havlicek was there with his foot along the side. John almost made a super big play for the Boston Celtics, but when you lift that foot up, that is kicking the basketball. It must be unintentional. Sobers trying to put Phoenix ahead. Cannot end Cowan Skies to rebound. Inside of two minutes here in the second overtime. It is Boston 107, Phoenix 106. JoJo White against the shot clock, forced one up. And inside, Gar Heard and John McLeod is going to use one of his two timeouts. He trails by a point. He's got a minute and 33 seconds up on that clock. 
Well, there's plenty of time to go in this basketball game. John McLeod trying to map out the strategy, take advantage of calling that timeout in this crucial situation. The Suns usually have responded quite well when John McLeod has called those timeouts. Back at the Boston Garden with a minute 33 left in this second overtime. The foul situation. Adams already out. Scott already out. Cowens, Autry, and Silas. Five fouls apiece. Take a look at this last play, Rick. Let's watch the last play here as Jojo White's going to come off for Paul Silas. He'll get the ball. Go over to the left side. 24 second box ticks down. There he goes. He makes a fake. Jumps back. Little contact on the play. I don't know. Mindy may have been the situation where the official thought he was trying to force Looks to me that foul. Curtis Perry might have fouled him just a little right. bit enough to throw the ball off which is all you need on a shooter from this guy like Jojo. Exactly. There was some contact there. Phoenix trailing by a point. Perry took the pass from Sobers, and here's Autry with the shot clock going inside at 10 seconds. Sobers from deep in the left corner misses. Silas with another big rebound. Celtics with a long pass to Jojo White. Couldn't control it in time to cut to the hoop for an easy layup. They set up their offense. Minute five. Collins. Collins went right straight up in the air. No basket, says Richie Powers. Offensive foul on David Collins, his sixth foul. Tommy Heinsohn went all the way off the court on that call. Dave Collins went high in the air and fouled out of this basketball game play that could have turned game five in Phoenix's favor. There we go. Let's take a look at it. There's the ball from Jojo going into Dave. Watch him get the ball. Be triple team right here. Now let's watch the move. Autry still stationary. Still stationary. Moves over. It was there, Rick. It was there. We've got another angle on it. Let's watch the angle. Let's see if Autry's moving on the contact. He's there. Dave jumps. Makes the contact. Richie Powers calls the offensive foul. Ball was absolutely there. What a turnaround that is. Instead of 109, 106, it's 107, 106. Toward 50 seconds. Suns with possession, trailing by a point. Collins and Adams have fouled out. We're in the second overtime of the Boston Garden. Havlicek went down, trying to draw the foul from Andre. Heinz and Curious, heard in the air. Loose ball. Andre was backing into his man. He's going to commit his sixth foul. Andre's out of the game. He was backing in for rebounding position. Bianchi and McLeod weren't happy with that call, but Dennis Autry had set some screen on John Havlicek just prior to picking up that other rebounding foul. And the emotion is really high here at Boston Garden. Let's take a look at the play again. Now watch the screen coming up by Autry on Havlicek. He stands right there. That looked like a pretty good screen. Havlicek just ran into the stationary man. But now Dennis Autry is going to be backing out on the shot. Well, we didn't run it far enough, but there's no question. Come the Celtics and McLeod extremely upset right now. 107, 106 in 30 seconds. Celtics ahead by a point in this second overtime. Jojo White on the drive, put it down at three points at 19. Phoenix will have to call a timeout. This will be their second timeout, their final one here in the second overtime. 106, Autry is still complaining. Well, Jojo White has been the big offensive man here in the second overtime for the Boston Celtics. Paul Silas has been a terror on the boards for him. And the old veterans coming through. Here's the play again. The side's cleared out. Gar Hurd comes over and makes a great effort to try and block it. And Jojo just simply put it out over the outstretched arms of Gar Hurd. Soft touch. The ball drops through. Three-point lead for the Boston Celtics here in double overtime. There's another angle on the play coming up here as JoJo gets by his man, goes up there, Scar Heard. He just gets it over with plenty of room to spare. And it's just a beautiful soft touch drive. And look at the position Paul Silas has. He was inside again. If that ball had missed, he would liable to have tipped it in. He was ready for the offensive rebound. He always is. Ricky Sobers and a fan are into it a little bit. Over on the Phoenix bench, they've turned Sobers around. There's Sobers. I 
Valley sits back down, 19 seconds to go. Suns trailing it by three points. John McLeod back to the drawing board. Well, it's good, Mindy. The one thing I am certain that the Boston Celtics will not do is to commit any kind of foolish foul on a try for field goal. They will not allow Phoenix to get anywhere near a three-point play. Well, that's what they should not do. Of course, the Phoenix is smart. They will try to get the ball inside quickly to force the Celtics to have to give them a relatively easy basket and not really play as tough a defense as they would like to. If they can score quickly, they then will have 12, 13 seconds to try and get the ball back from the Boston Celtics. And in that case, we'll talk about the strategy if that happens. Ball is over on this side. Garfield Hurd reminded the referee. Crowd chanting defense. Lumpkin, Westfall, and Van Arsdale on the floor. Van Arsdale with a quick shot. It's a one-point game again. Just what Rick predicted. Westfall to the corner. Back to Van Arsdale. Curry in the air. Won't go. Havlicek. Curry again. Curry with a jump shot. Put it down. Phoenix has gone ahead. We've got five seconds. I don't believe it. I don't believe what I just saw down here. Here. Here's the pass in coming out of Ed Arsdale. He gets the ball. They don't elect to go inside. Now he makes a quick fake to the left. Silas is on him. No foul. They don't want to get it. The shot goes up, and it's in. Now the Celtics try and get it in quickly. Jim Hart throws it over. Look at Paul Silas. Great anticipation. I mean, by Westfall. Throws it back in. Ben Arsdale. Curry misses. He's going to go hustle after it. He gets it back off of John Havlicek's hand. Still plenty of time to go. Pump fake. And the biggest basket of Curtis Perry's career right there. An incredible turnaround here in the second overtime. Boston has five seconds left to make up that point. Here's another angle on it. Look, there was Paul Westfall sneaking over, knocking out of Havlicek's hand. The shot by Perry again, no good. Off of John Havlicek, a tough break for the Celtics. The pump fake, John's up. Now a difficult shot from deep in the corner. Nothing but net for Curtis Perry. The Celtics now face the situation where they have five seconds to try to win this basketball game. So here they come. Nelson, Silas, Havlicek, Ard, and Jojo White against Westfall, Sobers, Van Arsdale, Perry, and Hurd. The final five seconds. Everybody on their feet here in the Boston Garden. And everybody will be looking for Jojo White. You can bet on that. Let's see if they try and pull a little switch here and maybe go with Havlicek. But they're only two good shooters right now because Nelson's taking out of bounds are White and Havlicek. Collins, remember, is fouled out. So is Scott. Here come the Celtics. Clock will start when it's touched. Havlicek touches it. It begins. Three seconds. Hondo off the glass. He's got it with a second. John Havlicek won it. It's over. Oh, no, there's two seconds to go. The Boston Celtics, but the clock should have run out. Or did it have two, two seconds on the to go in this basketball game, Brent? The ball went in with two seconds to go, and the clock has to stop on a made basket. The Phoenix Suns will get the ball with two seconds to go. A this game is Richie not Powers. over. Richie Powers is in a fight with a fan right here in front. Referee Richie Powers was assaulted by a fan. They pulled the four off. There are the cops out in the middle. They got fans out in the middle of the floor. The Phoenix Suns trying to get it cleared to get the two seconds off. Here's Richie Powers now. Don Murphy is over there with him. We've got two seconds. You're right, Rick. Murphy just told me. Murphy has verified what you said. Two seconds left. Two seconds left in the game. They've got to clear the floor. They've got to bring the Phoenix Suns back. It's not over yet. We've got two seconds left in this game. Here goes now John Havlicek. Motion. He's driving. He goes right up. Out. Makes an almost possible shot as he almost hits the floor. Banks it in. Two seconds to go. The ball had gone through. The clock ticked down to one, but there was two seconds when the ball was in the basket. 111, 110, double overtime. It's going to take us a while to get this floor cleared off. Murphy told me there were two seconds. Believe Absolutely, me, we've got two, two seconds left in this basketball game, and Tommy Heinsohn is back. They know it right now. Everybody's aware. The players have been told, but the fans aren't aware of the Boston Garden. They've got to get the fans off the floor. He's got to get off the floor, play the two seconds. John Havlicek making a super play for the Boston Celtics, hitting an extremely difficult shot. 
The Phoenix Suns not, of course, wanting to pick up a foul. They would have been in the bonus situation, so they had to pull back off. John made it, and then all oh, heck broke loose. There was Bedlam out there on the floor. The fans ran out, and they were excited to congratulate the Celtics if they thought the game was over. Someone attacked Richie Powers, but we've gotten order restored. Rick and Frank, you can't say, too, can't say too much about these officials. They have worked one Super Bowl game. And a fan attacking official to me is just unheard of. I don't buy that at all. Now let's see if they adjust it. One second, I believe, is the adjustment. Murphy had said two. They talked it over. Richie is over. Explaining it to John McLeod. Mindy, what is the rule on that? Is it when the ball goes in the basket or after it comes through and clears? As soon as the ball goes in the basket for an obvious score, Rick, the clock is supposed to stop. It looks to me as if there was two seconds. Now, what I see happening over there is the officials have checked with Bobby Rakel, who is the third official, and he called one. Now, Tommy Heitzel wants to know where the ball is going to be put in play. Now, it was after a basket, so it should be put in play underneath the, the hoop. Do they have a timeout left, or have they used both of them? West ball out there, pleading the Phoenix case with Powers. They're going to call a timeout now. If they have a timeout left, they will call it. Do they have one left, Mindy, or have they used both of them? They do not have any timeouts left. I would not be surprised now if they will call an extra timeout to gain the distance and have a technical foul assessed. Let him shoot can't it. possibly score from down there. That's exactly what they've done, Mindy. They have called the timeout. They have a chance to get it at half court. And this way they have a chance to at least tie the game and send it to a third overtime. Right, they could never score from 94 feet. They may from half court. 111-110. JoJo White can make it a two-point basketball game. He does. Now the final second of play here in the Boston Garden. Phoenix will get some court position. They're huddling around Tommy Heinsohn. What about the foul they've got to give right now, Mindy? They can give a foul. I don't think they will, Brent, because it's one second to play. Awfully difficult to get a good shot off. That clock will start as soon as it's inbounded and touches somebody. There's Heinsohn directing the second. Suns are over huddling with John McLeod. This has been one of the more incredible evenings in the history of championship play in the NBA. Leading by 22 points, the Boston Celtics found themselves tied once and then twice. And now we come to the end of the second overtime with a couple of the most incredible turnarounds I have ever seen. It is John Havlicek who put the Celtics ahead. Then the Suns took the technical to get court position. Curtis Perry wanted somebody to stand back. Won't start until it's touched. They'll have to throw it up. Garher, turn around, shot in the air. Oh! It's good. It's tied again. I don't believe it. Garfield heard at the buzzer, threw one in outside. We've got a third overtime in a Boston Garden. It's 112, 112. Unbelievable sequence. First it was Havlicek, then it was Garfield Hurd. All tied at 112. There's the play again, one second to go. Curtis Perry gonna look for Hurd. There's the toss in. Hurd gets the ball, turns. The clock still, no zero. It's off his hand, it went to zero. Good call, nothing in the basket, ties it up. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You talk about pressure situations. You play 48 minutes, then you play 10 minutes of overtime. You've got Curtis Perry, you've got Paul Westfall, you've got John Havlicek. You've got men going up and down the court. I honestly don't know how these athletes can stand the tension and the pressure of this game. It is a tribute to every man in the NBA what's happening here tonight in the Boston Garden. We head for our third overtime, tied at 112. Rick, how are these guys doing it? Brent, these fellows are playing on sheer guts, determination, total emotion. 
you play 58 minutes of basketball and have to go five more minutes this late in the season, that's an incredible feat. And I think right now it's coming down to a situation where you're going to have this game decided by men who are not the top stars, perhaps. Dave Cowan sitting on the bench, Charlie Scott on the bench, Alvin Adams on the bench. Absolutely incredible, fantastic How many games have you played in the NBA that have gone three overtimes? I have never been involved in a game with more than two overtimes. And have you I ever seen one? I was after that. No, I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. And this is some basketball game right here, ladies and gentlemen. You are seeing a fantastic effort by both ball clubs, something that you can remember for the rest of your life. And I think we've got to go back to that technical foul that was called on the excess overtime. The strategy worked absolutely perfect for John McLeod. Well, both teams, many were doing it. Tommy Heinze came up with a super play to get John Havlicek the ball. He responded. There's just been one great play after the other by these ball clubs. Each of them have made mistakes, but they've come right back to make the big play. You can't give enough credit to these great athletes out here this evening. It is ironic that it is now midnight here on the East Coast and still the Phoenix Suns refuse to turn into pumpkins. Jimmy Ard will come out and jump it off against Curtis Perry. We've had three centers fall out of this game. Two for the Suns, one for the Celtics. Dave Cowens, Alvin Adams, and Dennis Autry are out. Coaches and trainers and some of the players now are looking for some of the debris that was thrown out on the floor. Richie Powers, a referee, was assaulted. Received help immediately from the Boston police. And I want to say something about the referees that worked this game. I think it has been worked extremely well from beginning to end by Murphy and Powers. And don't forget, they've had to go the distance too. And they don't get any breathers over on that bench. And now we come to the third overtime of by far the most incredible basketball game I've ever witnessed. The only two men in foul trouble at this stage. Once again, Paul Silas still playing with five fouls. Paul Westfall with four fouls for Phoenix. And Westfall has control. Let's set the lineups. Westfall, Sobers, Van Arsdale, Perry, and Hurd. Up against Havlicek, White, Ard, Nelson, and Silas. Silas has gone a long time with five fouls. Now it's Curtis Perry out over the left side, giving it up to Van Arsdale, who wheels around him. He has turned the ball over. Rick Van Arsdale still having difficulty handling the ball with his left hand. He's still playing with a protective cast on that wrist. Can you imagine how many folks in Phoenix are watching this basketball game right now? It's been a very bad evening for the saloon business. Everybody's watching. Tied at 112. We got 431. We'll be in Phoenix Sunday for game six. Don't miss it. We got more action coming up. What an end to this season has been on CBS. Nelson outside. And Havlicek got inside with position. And finally, there was contact in there. They call a jump ball. Don Murphy saying that uh, Curtis Perry had his hand on the ball as John tried to go back up. You see Tommy Heinz, and he's not too happy with the call. There's the play. The shot goes up. Look at Havlicek in inside position. He's got it. He starts to go back up after the bounce. Perry was on the ball, he claimed. Off of Hurd's hands, and Jimmy Ard wisely lets it go out of bounds. He saw who had touched it last. The Suns are playing without a center. Both Autry and Adams have fouled out. And so it is Curtis Perry who is taking Jimmy Yard. Dave Collins, of course, also has fouled out for Tommy Heinsohn. If you are looking for the late, late show, hold on, folks. Nelson, using the glass, puts Boston up by two. 3.57. Sobers calling the play for the Sun. Here's Curtis Perry inside pass to Ricky Sobers who went in and tied it up at 114 with 344 to go. And this is the third overtime of game five. Big difference, the Suns scored inside, the Celtics had to score outside. JoJo White gave it up to Art. Shot clock down toward five. Havlicek fires in and out, and at the board was Garfield Hurd. And there was contact underneath. And, that's gonna and be Paul, Paul Silas, Silas has fouled out. Paul Silas is going to join Dave Cowens and Charlie Scott on the bench. And John McLeod and Al Bianchi are up. Just reminding the scoring table that Paul had been playing with those five fouls. I'll tell you, he deserves a great round of applause. That man played a basketball game. I'll tell you, that was something. That was some basketball game that guy turned in. Paul Silas huh? was the man that kept him in there. He came off the bench when they needed him, and he got all those big boards. 
both offensively and defensively. He was a mighty big factor, and he is going to be missed, and now the Suns have to try to capitalize on it. A lot of fans are wondering. There was a championship game that went four overtimes. Boston and Syracuse back in the 50s. Perry outside, and the Phoenix Suns go up 116-114. Now the Celtics are going to have to work hard. They don't have Collins, and they don't have Silas. They got Glenn McDonald and Jojo to the basket, put it down, tied it at 160. Three minutes to go. Collins watching from the bench, played an incredible game until he finally fouled out. He left in the second overtime. Here's Garfield Hurd. Jojo White passed him and put it down, and the Suns lead it by two. I have seen more defensive men leave their feet in this game than I've seen in any of the other games in the series thus far. A lot of paratroopers out there this evening. Here's John Havlicek. And Garfield Hurd was there on the interception. I couldn't pick a great player out of this series. It seems that there have been so many from game one now through game five in the third overtime. Phoenix Suns have a golden opportunity here to get a commanding lead. They're up by two right now. They can make it four, and they turn it over. Boy, did they miss that. Curtis Curry did not see Bar Heard. Two men jumped outside the Stormers. He had a layup. 2-5, JoJo for the tie. JoJo White has been unbelievable in this ballgame. He has carried the offensive burden. 31 points for White. Van Arsdale with control. Here's Curtis Perry. Perry battling for the loose ball. It's going to be a tough ball. Jimmy Yard got down there battling. Curtis Perry was a little upset because of the pushing that was being done against him defensively, and he tried to force the play right there. And wound up with a jump ball situation, and he got a good jumper in Jim Yard. Tied at 118. Celtics were going for position, and Jimmy Yard says, hold on, Hondo. Well, you get set. JoJo tipped it back to Nelson, quickly to Havlicek. Off to JoJo White on the penetration of McDonald, and a beautiful pass, and it was... Taking a drink from Frankie Shalad. Timeout, Celtics with both in this third overtime, and Phoenix with one. And all due respect to Curtis Perry, Rick, I don't think he saw Gar Hurd because there were two or three people within his uh, eyesight, and to pick up that kind of a play is awfully tough sometimes. 122 to 118. And here in the Boston Garden, there are 12 flags representing 12 different championships. And in this series, they're going for their 13th in the last 20 years. The Phoenix Suns came back in the last overtime in situations just like this with a little over a minute to go. If they come down, score a basket, they still have plenty of time to be able to come back and get another one. The Celtics then will be forced in a situation where they must go down and score. So let's see if the Phoenix Suns can rise to the occasion one more time or if the Celtic defense will rise to the occasion. Glenn McDonald will pick up Dick Van Arsdale. JoJo White has Ricky Sobers. John Havlicek has Paul Westfall. Don Nelson has Curtis Perry. And Jimmy Yard has Gar Hurd right now. It's Tommy Heinz's defense. Westfall, turn around, win here, 122, 120. Would you believe it? I don't believe the shots that have gone into this basketball game. You're seeing them, but they're still hard to believe. 59 seconds. Hondo off to JoJo. Left side, down, four again. What's that? 33 for JoJo. Four points in 54 seconds, 124 to 120. They still have plenty of time if they can score a basket here. Here's Dick Van Arsdale up in the air. Battle Glenn McDonald. He's had a big rebound, knocked away from him, and out of bounds. Foul, and foul. Now, Brent, foul. It was a foul on the play. Glenn McDonald had control, and I'll tell you, He's come off the bench and played himself a basketball game. JoJo White is so tired, he is backcourt at the three-quarter line near half court, sitting down. He is, look at him sitting there. He is so tired, he has played some basketball game, and he's trying to catch a blow right here. 33 points for that man. And White has scored 15 points in the last three overtimes. There's the shot by Van Arsdale. It goes off the board. McDonald up high to snatch the rebound. He'll put it on the floor. Curry will reach in. Right there, they call a foul. And it's a two-shot foul in the backcourt. It is an absolute pity that either of these teams has to lose this game. Yeah. It has been that kind of contest. The Celtics are in command. 126 to 120. Glenn McDonald, two big baskets, a pair of free throws, a rebound, 
came off the bench. He has been a disappointment to the Celtics this year, but here when they most needed it, with guys falling out, Silas and Cowens out of the game, it was Glenn McDonald, a second year pro from Long Beach State, who came in and ignited them. We got 36 seconds to go. It's 126, 120. Back in the Boston Garden. Now Bianchi with a few final words of advice. Boston breaks Tommy Heinsohn's huddle. Glenn McDonald, six points here in the third overtime. And Rick Barry, just as you predicted to me, it has been that unknown player who came off the bench and turned out to be the star here finally. Well, Brent, I tell you, so many strange things have happened. I wouldn't consider this game over yet. Too many crazy things have taken place. The Suns are liable to get in here, score a quick basket. They made a steal the last time. Let's see what happens. Certainly, the Celtics should be able to control it. If they can't control it from here, they've got some real problems. The crowd already thought it was over once. Here's Ricky Sobers now. Trent about six inside, make it four now. It's 126, 122. West ball directs the defense. Pressure coming. Celtics working against it. And Nelson called the timeout wisely when he was pressured. Now, Mendy, when he calls it out down there, what about the rules in the midcourt? Does he get court position, or do they still have to get it back out beyond the end line when they're pressured like that? After a field goal, Brent, the ball comes to midcourt, and they must pass it into the front court. Sobers has put down 25. JoJo White, 31 points. Rick and Mindy, we'll just get our bags and head to the airport and get on our way down to Phoenix. No sleep tonight. That's about the case. It's the situation now, of course, with probably Tommy Hines is going to tell the fellas, hold that ball for 24 seconds. If anybody shoots it, I'll have to come out there and get you. <laughs> As a businessman, for me, there is no other choice other than Datsun. We own 35 Datsuns, and they perform beautifully. You cannot beat the, the cost of operation, and the downtime is minimal. Rain, sleet, snow, these cars keep going, and they put an average of 1,000 miles a week on each one of them. We've tried four different manufacturers in the past four years, constantly checking to see if there's a better automobile than a Datsun, and for my money, there isn't. And we're back in the Boston Garden, 126, 122, 33 seconds to play. And it's nice to see you back here. A couple of policemen from Boston. God, we're fine. These people are nice folks. We're all right. Don't worry about us. I have some passionate fans here in Boston. I think they thought that maybe Rick and Mindy had favored the Phoenix Suns a little bit for two games, but not so, folks. And I think now everybody in Boston believes it. These Phoenix Suns can play basketball. 33 seconds to go. It's 126 to 122. Harry over now at the midcourt line, as Mindy told you. JoJo White wants to listen. I wants to point something out. Phoenix has no timeouts left, which could be a very important factor in this ball game right now. No timeouts for Phoenix. Yes, they need to be aggressive defensively. They're also in a bonus situation. They have to hope to come up with a steal without fouling, get a quick basket down there, and perhaps steal it again in the backcourt. That's about the only hope that they have. Inbounds pass to Havlicek. And there was a whistle away from that throw. And the strategy by John McLeod was to commit a foul the moment you couldn't get the steal on the inbounds pass. They're taking a gamble that Jim Ard, who is not the best free throw shooter, will miss his opportunities at the foul line, enabling the Suns to get possession of the ball without using up, using up too much time on the clock. How many folks do you think have left the Boston Garden? One, two? One the last two Only those that were called out in emergency. It is still one. jammed to the Raptors. Murphy wanted to double check to make sure they were in the penalty situation. He wanted to be certain there were no mistakes made. It's 127, 122. That's got one door on that barn closed where the Boston Celtics have stored all that hay for this game, Brent. This could put the nail in it. There it is, 128. 122. Six points, 29 seconds. I think Phoenix is about run out of miracles. And just when I say that, somebody throws up an unbelievable shot. Oh, Westfall with an incredible shot. 25 seconds. A little bit too late, though, I think, Brent. Look at the fans around the Boston Garden. Well, they oh. thought it was over a long time ago. That's 23 points for Paul Westfall. Clocked down to 21 seconds. It's a four point lead. And McDonough lost it. 17 seconds, Sobers has got Westfall open. 
It's two points again at 12 seconds. Here is Glenn McDonald. Two-point basketball game. Nelson gives it to Art West. Ball's got a hand on it. Art goes back. Five seconds. Right. Four. Three. Two. One. It's going to be all over. And look at the fans here in the Boston Garden. They battled three overtimes. And finally, it's over. But would you believe the end of that third overtime? It was 128, 122, and still the Phoenix Suns got down with a couple of baskets. Fans swarming all over the floor here. Chatty, we're number one. But I want to tell you, Phoenix made them work for it tonight. And we got more of the same coming up on CBS Sunday afternoon when we go down for the sixth game of this series, 3.30 p.m. And this is Brent Musburger from Mindy Rudolph, Rick Berry, and Sonny Hill saying goodbye from the Boston Garden where you have just watched the most incredible game in the history of the NBA. Boston 128, Phoenix 126, triple overtime. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. A great talent surrounded by new talent. See the premiere of Dinah and her new best friends. Starring Dinah Shore with special guest, Gene Stapleton. Tomorrow at 10.